All right, hello everybody, and welcome to Aetherite Radio. This is GamerEscape.com's Final Fantasy XIV podcast. I'm Fusion X, and joining me tonight, we have Zanidra and Bryn. How are you guys doing? Excellent. <laughs> Fan freaking tastic. <laughs> and as a special treat for everybody, we have the uh, newcomer to uh, Aetherite Radio who's going to be helping us out a little bit from time to time here, and with some uh, video work uh, on Gamer Escape and the Final Fantasy XIV wiki in the future here, the bearded Moogle doctor himself, we have Dr. Mog. What's up, Internet? <laughs> That's my line. Uh, I'm a guest on <laughs> your show. He's taken over. <laughs> All right, so uh, tonight's kind of a big deal. Um, the NDA was essentially lifted for special outlets today, uh, including Gamer Escape. Um, and we are going to answer your questions about Phase 1 and 2 of the Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn beta. Um, keep in mind, this is an, a lift only for us. Um, not for you guys, so please do not discuss um, the and you know anything protected under the NDA in the chat. Um, feel free to ask us questions, though, and we will answer everything that we can. Um, also, um, for people wondering why this, just a pretty background, um, we are not everybody has a cam tonight. Um, I'm actually traveling because of some family stuff, unfortunately. So uh, I'm actually at a hotel on Wi-Fi right now. So. Hopefully my connection uh, will will not crap out during this, um, but uh, I think uh, it'll be a good show. We'll have a lot of information for you guys, so uh, I guess we'll uh, just get right to it then. Michelle, you want to uh, lead us into questions here? All right. Did you want to start with the ones we stole off of our little pre-internet sources, or do you want to go straight to the uh, the feed here? Well, let's let's start with what we have, and then uh, as the uh, chat throws some out there, we'll uh, jump and take some of those. Okay. Well, the very first person I know of, uh, how do you even say that? It's like Varakin or something like that. They wanted to. <laughs> we're, they wanted we're to know. Yeah, they wanted to know how many uh, dungeons were in uh, phase two, and I guess phase one because it's really change. Yeah. Or three whole dungeons. Great. Um, <laughs> I think it was. Yeah, no, they were all added in, in phase one. Um, mm -hmm. So we have, uh, what is there? There's Tamtar, Tam Deepcroft, that's level 15. Mm -hmm. um, and then Total Rock at uh, 20, 25. 25, 25. 25, and then 30 is a Hawk Manor. Um, and we've seen, uh, they had a video out for Tamtar, I believe. Um, Total Rock, um, I talked a little bit about that um, back in February. Um, I got to play it at the, uh, the media tour out in San Francisco. It's essentially the same thing, but with more slimy stuff and fleshy pods. No way, man. There's sounds weird. There's some new mechanics yeah. in there. It's it's well, the way I would I would describe it best is it's it's new enough to where uh, people that have played version one before will be like excited to play it, um, but old enough to where it still feels really familiar. Yeah, man. That it's kind of like that, that happy medium. Got the same uh, setup and stuff. And they actually it's, have a yeah, couple of little is, fun Easter eggs in there. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. it's, it's so also nice regarding with the crazy. jump and being have, being able you can jump in this. Uh, it, it changes up how <laughs> it originally was because there was like, okay, well, <laughs> this is a one way path. Now you're not inhibited. But interestingly enough, the first time I went in, I, I found myself going, oh man, I fell down. But then I was like, okay, wait, oh, that's right, I can jump off this thing. <laughs> saying, I definitely did the same thing. Um, no, there's some fun new mechanics in there that surprised me. I think everybody's first run through there will be an awesome surprise. I don't want to spoil mm -hmm. that, but there's uh, that one particular thing that happens in the dungeon where... With the wind? Don't, be, don't, be, don't be too vague. Okay, yeah. Well, I guess we are spoiling <laughs> stuff today, aren't we? So, yeah, um, we do. That's yeah, what we do. There's Talk like, about it. Okay, there's a spider web in, in the dungeon that you walk up to and you're like, what's this? And all of a sudden it like launches you through the spider web into a whole group of monsters and it's it surprised the hell out of me. It was it was fun. I mean, you know, it, and there's a few other little things, but that one really yeah. got me. Yeah, I know uh, something that surprised me um, in Tamtara, and I think um, some of you Final Fantasy XI players might be interested in this. Uh, the demons, the uh, same character models from Final Fantasy XI, are back, uh, and you can see some of them in the Tamtara Deepcroft. Uh, so that's kind of cool. I, you know, when mm -hmm. he popped up, I was like, oh, hey, I know who you are. Why are you here? <laughs> Shouldn't you, like, be up in, like, Zarkabard or something? What do you, what's going on? So uh, that was pretty cool to see. Um, and then uh, Hawk Manor is kind of cool because it's, it's the first kind of, you know, it's really the new, the first new 
really new feeling raid um, out of everything. I mean, you know, Tam Tarot's, you know, this kind of dungeony underground thing. We've kind of had that vibe before. This one is in a house. <laughs> it's a huge um, house, though. It's, it's a huge house, yeah. Um, it sort of gives you the feeling that uh, Spiranix really likes Halloween. <laughs> it feels, it and feels like a, a giant like haunted Moogle. house. The Smoogle song. Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, the house is really cool. Um, you go around and you collect keys to you know open doors and stuff and, and go through that. You go through the cellar a little bit. Um, and there's couches that you can sit on, which... Serves no purpose whatsoever. Nope. But if you <laughs> were to be going through Hawk Manor and you're like, you know what, I want, I want to take five. You could totally do that and sit on a couch while you're doing it. On the, uh... the uh, go ahead. In the chat just now, we were asked if we would say that Hawk Manor is like a mansion, a haunted mansion. Yeah, I would definitely say that's what it is. Yeah. It's yeah. I mean, it's there's not like, you know, ghosts around every corner. It's not like, it's not like uh, Guskin up. in. It's in, it's uh, like kind of like an abandoned kind of mansion. Um, I think. Mog, when you were when you were first, at it, I think you compared it to like the Shinra Manor. Yeah, it feels um, exactly like the Shinra Manor in Seven. Yeah. Another, I don't know. If, I don't know if I'd go that far. Oh, come but on. It's, it's, Another it's, question. You know, it's the house, there's kind of clutter around, and it's you know, it's it's got kind of a creepy vibe, especially with like some of the lighting. Like there's some tipped over lamps and stuff like that, and so it's pretty cool. Another question that just popped up is that uh, asking on the dungeons, are there time limits? And uh, right now, yes, there are uh, in phase one and phase two, there are uh, time limits. Uh, typically, and if it's different, you know, <laughs> if I can't recall, but it's set at an hour. But the, yeah, um, the time limit wasn't um, wasn't needed at all, really. Mm -hmm. I don't think it, we even came close to needing the entire half hour no, of the dungeons. To keep in mind, too, with that, um, in version one, there were... Um, you know, there are various things you can do in a dungeon to unlock more chests at the end after you kill the boss, and one of those was to beat it under a certain amount of time. The time chests aren't going to be in a Realm Reborn; those are gone. Yes. So that's <laughs> nice. Yeah, because I can remember you know doing so many runs. Oh well, we, you know we lost it by thirty seconds. Good job, guys. You all suck. You know. <laughs> so well, that gone. and you end up just running through the whole dungeon, not fighting um, anything. And it's, I guess yeah. for everybody listening who who isn't aware, the dungeons are. The basically the replacement of like party grinding right now, and that's what um, it seems like that the way it's going is that you want to get if you want experience and you want to level, um, you'll get the most experience, and you obviously have to have a party when you go into the dungeon, and so that's kind of what the, the the real you know purpose of it is that you you know you can you can quest solo, but with the dungeon in and of itself, it's I mean it's ridiculous experience. Yeah, uh, and, and um, it's I, a and it's a blast to play because you kind of have that goal. Um, as you work your way through it. And then also, oh, I guess we'll, I'm getting ahead of myself. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I use the dungeons as filler. I mean, there was a lot of different things you could do in the beta to level the, between the fates yeah. and the quests, and there's a decent number of quests. Um, but quests didn't get me all the way to 15. There was some missing stuff. So, uh, you know, using the dungeons and the fate and uh, the other stuff going on in the game helped get me to 15, and then I used the dungeon for a few levels, so it's diverse. It was and nice. I know there was there was a question, I think, somewhere. I don't know if, if it ended up in the dock. I've been in a car all day, but uh, <laughs> uh, there was something about uh, asking about like leveling and progression, stuff like that. Yeah, um, that was actually the, the next question. It, oh, was it? Uh -huh. With that one? Ah, I, I'm missing my multiple what monitors slash how so is much the right now. Um, so right now, in the beta... Um, it's a little different just because not everything is implemented yet. Um, I mean, there were quests added in phase two that weren't there in phase one um, that, you know, helped kind of ease, you know, leveling a little bit. Um, I know in phase one, it got to the point where the only way to level up was basically to, you know, kind of camp fates and do leave quests <laughs> or uh, or do total rock. Um, so it's, Definitely, you know, uh... as the updates are coming, they're adding more quests and they're, they're making the progression smoother. Um, but really right now, best method to gain experience is you're just, you're questing your way along. Um, they're getting, they're getting rid of that. Um, you know, you have to group up, set up a camp and just kill monsters for hours on end, um, idea. And they're going all quest based. Um, the good news about that, um, is because there's more quests, that means there's more lore. Um, so for all these story buffs, that's really good news. Uh, if you don't care about the story, it's a few extra mouse clicks. I think you'll you'll live. Um, <laughs> but there's also, you know, we have the raids. Um, you know, you can do those in between quests for gear. Um, fates will pop up. You can jump into those whenever you see them for a little, you know, a little extra something something or whatever. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's 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 your typical kind of MMO. But there are other things that you can do that that'll help <laughs> kind of shake it up a little bit. We wanna um, everybody's hop back calling the boss. <laughs> There have been a couple more questions. 
Um, I, I think we're moving really quick. I mean, there's a lot of stuff we're covering. Can we talk more about some of the specifics? Because, um, yeah. I mean, like the, uh, just in, in general, the... Uh, what, do you, what, do you want to go back to, like, dungeons? or like uh, In leveling up. The, the, leveling up? Yeah, I, I think that there's a lot to talk about in leveling up. Uh -huh. Just so far. Um, how about fates? What did you guys think of those? I love fates. I thought they were really cool. Um, and it's it's cool because they can add. It's not just like okay, there's this thing going on. Go kill this guy. You know, it can add some humor and some kind of story to it. My favorite one, I think, so far is the um, the drunk guy at Boost Grunds Brothers. It's basically this guy that gets drunk and he starts fighting with like other patrons, and so you have to basically just go and beat him up so he stops, which is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> Another thing that's cool um, is there aren't any open world NMs anymore. All the NMs are fates. Um, so Behemoth will be a fate. Odin will be a fate. They've talked about that already. Um, but we're also seeing NMs from 1.0 coming back as fates like Alex or Sirocco. Um, so those are really cool to see. Um, and they're really big now. So And they were we in the beta. We get to fight a few of those. That was fun. Yeah, yeah, they're they're pretty big now. So uh, it's cool to say, oh, hey, I remember that guy. You know, like I camped him for, you know, whatever item that was that... And who knows how you're you're gonna get it now? But um, it's you know it's cool to run into that kind of stuff. Some of that yeah. stuff shows up in uh, as rewards from the dungeons, which is really strange. Yeah. Um, and you know what else? Um, speaking of rewards from dungeons, let's back to dungeons just a mm -hmm. tiny bit. Um, a lot of people might know that they are changing the way that gill, or not changing the way, but they're reducing gill by a tenth of the value. Um, and so that's you know kind of. You know, it's going to change a lot of stuff, but um, something that's really cool is in these dungeons now, there's more chests, I feel. I feel there's more chests than there were in 1.0. Um, and a lot of it is um, contains what they're, what are they, like Allegan bronze pieces? Well, there's right? two mm -hmm. types of chests currently there's in, a couple, in the dungeons. Yeah, there's two types of chests. There's basically this rusty old looking chest, um, and this will give you basically just like NPC fodder. It's stuff that'll sell for a higher value than you know most crap will. Um, and so you can use that just for straight gill. Um, and you can also choose to get uh, those items from uh, quests as a reward instead of certain armor. So if you figure, you know, if you do a quest and you say, this armor looks like crap, I'll just take the money. You know, you can get these items and just sell them for, for gill. I always thought um, that was for the level 50s, because when we go back and do those quests, maybe. we're not going to want the level 20 gear. We're going to want the money. And or another, the another possibility. Bronze pieces for that. And another possibility, too, is, um, you know, some of the quests do offer either the same gear or similar gear. So, you know, maybe depending on what you've done, if you've done a class quest and you've already got, you know, this particular piece of armor and you don't need it again, you can opt to get the uh, the elegant reward and just cash it in or something. Now, on the uh, topic of gear, we have another question that was basically relating um, the crafted gear, maybe with Matera being fixed versus the, the gear in the dungeon being dropped. And just to clarify, right now in Phase 1 and 2, there's no Matera fixing, so I can't answer that directly, but I would say that for the gear from um, being dropped from the dungeon, seem you know it seems to be you know pretty great. But I would have to think that later you know they're going to balance it out to where crafted gear has that um, you know has that level. And I believe it was in a live letter that Yoshi P actually uh, mentioned it as well, talking about um, kind of the balance in, in that regards. If you guys have any insider thoughts yeah, regarding the, the gear, what, what, you, what Yoshida said is um, every piece of gear will have what they call an item level, um, and there will be certain kind of requirements. I, you know, I don't know how tight or loose those are going to be on, you know, if you want to do this raid, you should have an item level of around this. Um, and the idea was that you would progress through the raids and you would boost your item level up in order to get into the next raid. And if you were missing pieces or whatever, you'd be able to buy a piece of crafted gear to, you know, get up to that point. Um, another thing that they're adding too, we should probably talk about this, um, in... I want to say all the raids that we've they've had so far, um, there's been what they call ethereal gear. Yes. Um, which has random values assigned to it. It's a tiered thing, right? Ethereal, and then there's rare items, right? Yeah. Well, you you I think you had more of a handle on on how that stuff worked. Um, but yeah, the... you get an item, and it can have this. It it'll have like a, a set of stats that it'll have, and then it'll have something else like on top of that and those values can fluctuate yeah for for instance like a body piece will have three main stats on it you know int and casting speed and uh mine for instance but then it has a chance to have three additional random values and mm. so you know you're looking for that body piece but of a certain archetype you know you want that one with more int on it or casting speed 
or if you're a healer, you want that same body piece with mind and um, who knows vitality or something. So right, yeah. So I mean, you know, even if, um, and I think that adds value to the raids too. I mean, only mm -hmm. um, you know a lot of people are are kind of seeing them as an alternative to just you know party grinding, going in, you do a raid, and you can get some gear, um, and if this gear can have different values on it. If you you know you could min max the hell out of it if you really wanted to, and you could say, oh well, I need one more dex on this. Let's run it again. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, the values so. don't change though. The same. No, no, the right. values yeah. don't change in the random stats. It's just the stats themselves. Oh, no. mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you can get you can get a piece that has like three, and then you well, can maybe, get a piece that maybe has you're like, like, six. No, like no, 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 no. <laughs> not not numerically that's... wise. Not numerically wise. You can get a piece oh, that has you mean three different of bonuses. Three different attributes added, but then you could get the same piece that has six different attributes added. Right, there, there's, um, so you could get that same body piece with this, the base three stats, and you could get it without any bonuses at all. Or you could get it with, like, mind index, or you could get it with mind so there, dex and so int. So there is value of right. running it over and over and yes. over again. Yeah. If, yeah, if you do. So, that's that's kind of nice to see. I like that a lot, actually. Yeah. Wiki uh. doesn't, but... Uh. <laughs> no, it doesn't at all. <laughs> It'll have, like, a list. This is what you could get. Good luck. Right, yeah, exactly. All right, uh, what do we got next year? Thanks. Or did you did you have any more you wanted to touch on for leveling monk? Um, no, just uh, just an opinion on it. I mean, I felt it was that there was enough to do while I was leveling, and I didn't feel like I was sitting there grinding mobs. I know some people like that, but I liked yeah. that as I was doing quests, you know, fate sidetracked me, and then you know there was a shout for a dungeon, and I went and did that. So I like that. Yeah, I mean, what the I think the the thing to keep in mind too when you're leveling and when you're just questing is. If you see a fate pop up that's nearby, go to the fate. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, I think those are those are important um, in order to progress. I mean, you know, ideally, yeah, you can just quest, 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 and level up and stuff. But um, if you any fate you see nearby, if you jump into that, that'll make the the leveling a little smoother. Um, also, the hunting logs. Uh, we haven't touched on this. I don't know if they've if they've talked about this publicly uh, or not either. Um, but there's these things called hunting logs. Um, these are for all the the magic and and melee classes. Basically, you know, uh, uh, go out, kill X amount, you know, of these mobs, um, and they're almost like kind of like mini quests. Um, well, you get and so, XP for completing sets you, of yeah. monsters that you kill. It's like Fields of Valor, mm -hmm. but right. Just and once. so they're they're grouped by uh, by like mob type, or like by by little sets, and then by um, level. Like, what are they? Well, yeah, it's like level, but it's like what are they? What are they? Is it? Are they called levels, or it's like it's like for like? There's level trying. ranges. Is how the interface works. Like levels yeah. one to ten, you have maybe yeah, fifteen monsters in there, and you have to kill all of the monsters in that page basically to. Right. And there's a lot of them to go to yeah. pr page two, which is like level ten to twenty. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So so like the first task will be like go kill like five marmots or something. So you kill five marmots, you get a little bit of XP bonus, and then you go for the kill a couple other <laughs> sets, and then after yeah. you kill all those sets within that page, you get another bonus. Um, so and I think the really kind of cool part about that too is you should, if you keep up to date with your honey log as you're going around areas, that should be another thing that helps kind of smooth out the leveling curve a little bit for everybody. Mm -hmm. So make sure to check your your uh, your honey log. And uh, kill those guys as you as you see them. So. And yeah, the nice the thing is it has log. that little icon right above the you know their name if it's you know on yeah. your log for and so it's like oh you'd be running around in the in the forest and oh you're like oh there's that green hunting log icon I'm gonna go take him out and then you know it, and it adds that you know you, that way you don't have to always feel like you have to check the log to see what you it's, have. Yeah, it's basically like if you're walking around and you see a mob with a little icon next to it, kill it. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's the you know stop tip, what you're doing and kill that's it. That's a good point. Tip number one. <laughs> Finish your hunting log. It's awesome. Yeah, and it's different and you have for each it class for each too. Job. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Okay, it just starts over. I don't know if I like that or not, <laughs> because like, <laughs> imagine trying to complete your your uh, hunting log on each of your level fifties. So you got to go back to like level one and kill all the level one <laughs> monsters on your level fifty, and then the level ten monsters, and that. And everyone's gonna do that like day one of launch to all the new players, and be like, "Why are these guys over here? <laughs> there's, there's fifty Why or are sixty there no level fifties out killing lady books." <laughs> Have a Dropping things, AOEs things just quickly. left and right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, we had one question. Um, Actually, wanted to um, suggest. Here. Yeah, we jumped back to uh, dungeons. Big surprise. Wipe in dungeons. Uh, it's pretty much the same thing as in 1.0 so far. Um, I mean, if you die, you home point and you return to the entrance. Um, I know in Toto Rock, I believe it was, there's a portal that opened up. 
Um, if you got, you know, if you got to the boss and you wiped on the boss, there's a portal that'll open up that'll take you back towards the boss chamber, so you don't have to rerun the whole thing like you did in 1.0, which was, was nice. Cause, I don't um, know. AD and CC had the if you had killed the deep Lord slaves, have... it would yeah. let you teleport to them. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did. They did. Brain fart. Well, they have that uh, in 2.0. Well, Total Rock, Total Rock didn't have that before, did it? <laughs> no, it didn't. So that's new for Total Rock. <laughs> so that's that's kind of nice to have. So hopefully all the dungeons. Well, I don't think Tamtara had that though. Did it? Or maybe I just never wiped I never in Tamtara. Wiped in Tamtara either. Yeah. yeah, it was easy. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that's 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 nice for. No, I'm going to go ahead and say it didn't have it. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't think it did either. I think I remember running back. But all right. Um, are there notable landmarks or any areas that are worth exploring? Every area is totally worth exploring. Mm -hmm. Oh um, yeah. These zones are gorgeous. Uh, Yoshida said that he wanted to make sure that each zone had a certain number of landmarks or basically just pretty things to look at. Um, and he's definitely kept up on that promise. Uh, there's still a lot of landmarks from 1.0 around. Um, if you were uh, familiar with Black Shard a lot, uh, Amber Scale Rock is still in the game. So you can go check that out. There's also uh, the, uh, there was the, the tree. And I can't remember what it's called now. It's driving me nuts. It was in the Central Shroud. There's the big slug NM, Fade NM. Does anybody oh, know? Um, <laughs> Evershade. Yes, that's still there. I only know that because that's where I logged out. Nice. <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's still there. Um, but I'm they don't sure look the same. Up. I think we should no, not definitely at all. let people know that the game and the world doesn't look at all like it did before, but it's, it's familiar. Different, yeah. yeah. And there's... Yeah. there's things that were in 1.0. And in some things are just in different places entirely. Yeah, everything. Uh, for example, uh, the Gamoran ruins, somebody asked about um, at one point and all the stuff, and that was like the northest point you could get in the Shroud, and now it's kind of almost, you know, southwesty. Yeah, it's all kind of shifted around a little bit, but um, all the zones look really, really great. Um, in 2.0, you have to kind of unlock the map as you kind of explore around, but um, I think people will love to explore because it looks really, really good. It um, might have just a lot been of because visually interesting things, and it might have been just been because we were stuck in like four zones in this phase. But it, it's just a little <laughs> small. I mean, I guess yeah. I'm, I guess I'm you know pampered by how big the zones were in 1.0. But well, you're, you're you're talking to a guy that was stuck on on on, a, on an island for the first alpha, so I I, <laughs> I can understand that, yeah. But yeah. uh, I mean, you know, but there's it, a lot of life in them. It's not like they're small and yeah, terrible. Yeah. You know, there's a lot going on, so it it's, felt lively. It's not like 1.0 where even after updates, it's like check this out. We have like these little settlements. It's like a house. In the no, middle yeah, of it's it, the world has been the shroud, and yeah, now the, it's like a group of houses with a bar and drunk people that are fates because fight. they yeah. beat up people. And I mean, it's the, this world is very, very much alive. Uh, compared to 1.0, and this that, is just out the field areas. Yeah, that and the hamlets, they feel like they serve an actual purpose rather than just being randomly placed out there, just something you had to run to. It actually makes sense to where they're placed, and it, you know they serve pur a purpose. And you know there's shops and there's NPCs. Yeah, it's like the world feels alive, and it's not you know it, <laughs> it, it it's is. It's not a pain to go through. Either. Oh, I there's know. There's a lot of different ways to go places. They're, they did put chocobos in, and there's like two or three different ways you can use chocobos at this point. And, and, and there's, it, of course, teleporting. And they made the change to teleporting, so it costs gil now, which is awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no more anima. That made me so happy. <laughs> I think that was uh, that was a change between alpha and beta, if I recall. Because I can remember I was when I was at, back in, out in San Francisco, uh, Bayonne is like, hey, open up your teleport menu. He's like, check that out. I was like, oh, no more anima. <laughs> I was like, yes. I'm gonna miss anima, but I guess I'm 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 the no, weirdo. Oh, you're not. Oh, yeah. the lore, I, the it's because eleven it's actually, made me so stingy. <laughs> the lore on the anima, you know, the anima being gone and the and the cost and gill makes kind of sense. Is that they say you know anima is a is a constant reoccurring energy that everybody has access to, but the gill cost goes to supporting the different camps, you know, for supplies and things mm. of that nature. So it's an excellent gill sink. Um, you know, uh, I know 1.x was always la really kind of lacking a lot of uh, gill sinks. Um, so I think it's an excellent gill sink. And they've also, you know, for those who don't want to teleport, they have the, the you know, uh, I'm going to butcher the, the pronunciation, the Chocobo uh, um, porters that basically will run you from place to place. Uh, for a small piece of gill, you know, so yeah. it's it's a, it, it, there's a lot of ways to get around, 
and it's uh, it's also enjoyable to go off the trails and, and run and see what you can find. Honestly, I ran most places because it didn't feel like I was running from Camp A to Camp B with nothing in between. Yeah. There was, I mean, the scenery is decent, so going yeah. between the camps and so forth, running wasn't boring at all. Oh, they also added uh, ferries. Uh, there, there was, was like one, two I think. Of those? There was, yeah, there was one. It goes from uh, New Gridania to the East Shroud, I believe it was. O- old Gridania to East Shroud. Was it Old Gridania? Yeah, it's the northern one. Oh, I got those. Gridania is split right, up into two maps now. <laughs> Yeah. I don't Crap, did I, I wonder if I got that right right in my write up now. I don't think you did. <laughs> and, and you guys and you guys read it too. So I mixed it up too. I, I didn't catch they it. They don't they're not Verdania <laughs> itself is not that different than it was. I I feel like the top one should be New Verdania because it's the one that's more different. Where the, where the eighth right used to be. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the only difference. Um all right, let's uh let's see what else we got here for the questions. <laughs> Uh, how is the controller UI? Will there be any improvements? Of course, there's going to be improvements. It's a beta. You know, I'd be worried if there wasn't any improvements. Um, initially, gamepad UI sounds pretty good. I mean, it, it feels good. Um, it takes a little bit to get used to, just between the you know, you got to hold the shoulder buttons, and you can use the D-pad for actions, which is weird because you're always used to using you know the side with the buttons instead of the D-pad. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think if if people you know play only with the with the gamepad, I think they'll be They'll be able to, you know, get to their actions and stuff pretty quick. I'm not I'd a... say it's going to take about fifteen, you know, to thirty minutes to really get a ha- handle for it. But I, after you get the handle for it, I think I would describe it as ingenious. Um, sure, some adjustments are going to be made, uh, et cetera. But it is, I love it. I actually, I, I find it um, comforting and being able to switch in between the two different control styles um, is is fun, you know. And so it depends on really what I'm trying to do. If I'm uh, got my PC hooked up to the to my TV, kick back on the couch with the gamepad, or if I'm mm-hmm. at my desk, I can play mm-hmm. keyboard and mouse. Uh, it works really well. I really have enjoyed um, the the new UI with the gamepad, the hot uh, the the hot crossbar or whatever they're calling it. Um, it is something to be excited about. And the normal PC user, inter- I mean, uh, control scheme is actually fairly fluid. I like that too. Um, yeah, mm-hmm. we should talk about that too, since you know it's part of. Yeah, the, that'd uh, be good. <laughs> um, and and I'm a I'm a PC. I mean a keyboard and mouse user, so it felt it felt clean, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And it felt just like yeah. every other MMO I've played. Yeah, there's not much to say on it. Just that it works. About like, like oh, it's like every other MMO. Well, yeah, but, but you know what? You'll transition. know how to play it as soon as yeah. you get into the damn game. <laughs> That's the point, <laughs> people. Yeah, I mean I don't it's have supposed to, to be user friendly. Keyboard and mouse, you know. There are plenty yeah. of little, uh, you know, prompts to tell you how to do it, but you don't really need them if you've played any other MMO yeah, at this it's point. It's supposed to be very familiar to people. That's mm-hmm. that's the whole point of all this. So, and it and it does that very well. So, well, the only thing um, I'm going to complain now. <laughs> the only oh. thing is, I like to. I used to do uh, controller keyboard because I like to do the commands off the keyboard and move with the controller. And uh-huh. you do have to do a lot of mouse clicking. There's just no way around that. Yeah, I was yeah. I was all controller uh, in eleven, and uh, I've you know in version one point um, controller was kind of meh, so I got into mouse and keyboard, and now I'm I think I'm still kind of into, into mouse and keyboard. I like the controller, but I don't know. You know, I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to spend more time with it. It could be it could be pretty cool though. I think you bring it up. I could live without it at this point. On the... it's it's coming it's coming along really well. So. Mm-hmm. On the keyboard and mouse, um, when you said there's a lot of clicking, there's actually a lot more clicking I found in this game than there is in other MMOs. You can usually key bind stuff on your keyboard to do most of the actions for the interface and stuff. Um, but in the in the beta so far, I felt like I was clicking on a lot of stuff. <clears throat> but that was just me. Gotcha. I know, oh. and they've they've been adding stuff for for key binds and controls. The final win, uh, and earlier actually, on, yeah. was like you could key bind like uh, gaming mice buttons and stuff but you could now so uh that's that's very very nice to see mid um mid phase two i think they actually uh changed some of the key bindings so they are obviously still working on it yeah, yeah but there there will be key bindings so don't worry and uh there wasn't a whole lot of customization for the uh, gamepad in uh phase two but they're you know they're working on that too so that'll be better it's a beta so <laughs> there's a lot of stuff that they're going to be working on and fix it to uh to get better, so. Next question again. All right. Um. What do we got? 
Um, you think about the male Makote dance. I think it's weird and it creeps me out. Then no, I no may or than may any not have lost sleep while thinking about it. We could talk about animations I, for a minute. Yeah, let's do that. I oh my gosh, I love so many of the new animations. Yeah. I'm jealous of the new races because they just have great animations. They're smooth. Everything mm. in, in yeah. animation is done quite well. And I I love that they removed that little like start uh, start up like when you go to like start moving mm -hmm. oh inertia that drove, that drove me nuts in 1.0 well now it's uh movement is prioritized over the animation so there's yeah. some feet sliding but they're working on that they said uh yeah. but but it's nice to be able to anything that you do just, happens just immediately nice to just move. <laughs> well yeah i mean just anything that you do happens immediately and then the animation you know is secondary so it's yeah. i'd it's much smooth. rather slide than be stuck yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's the trade-off, you know, for that. I actually saw a couple of people sliding around in uh, in Phase 2 last weekend. Just people, like, they... I don't know if they were, like, in the middle of an animation or what the deal was, but their characters just kind of sliding around on the floor. Kind of like uh, what happened in uh, Eleven sometimes, where people were just, you know, like, the nutcracker pose, their arms are just kind of, like, straight down and just <laughs> sliding around. But they were in, like, different poses. It was kind of weird. Some of that's uh, network things that I yeah. think they're working out because I noticed a few times that characters would like lurch forward and pause and lurch forward and pause like you know huh. in, in cycles on the server and mm -hmm. uh, it was I mean it, it was only once or twice and I think it was just when there was heavy latency and honestly that was the worst I saw for latency issues the um, mm -hmm. that happens yeah. in jumping too yeah. all a lot of, of times when all. you see other people jump at the top of their jump they sort of stop there for a second and then they come back down yeah they all in all it. I've run this and my wife also is in the uh, in the beta and she she plays it on the on the laptop and where before the laptop I mean struggled so hard to play uh, 1.x this plays 1.x so smoothly I mean sorry uh, this plays like so smoothly <laughs> Yeah, you know, I'm I'm drinking. I'm I'm already halfway through my beer. Uh, <laughs> I'm into these things. The um, no, but it is the 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 latency, the lag. They you know they have really engineered you know the the client and the server, and it's only going to improve. You know, it's from what I've seen from you know phase one and phase two. It is uh, it's so exciting to be able to get into this game. And yeah, there's been issues where you know. Thousands and thousands of people are trying to log in, et cetera, from you know the very beginning. But they really seem to be working those out, and I think by the time uh, phase three and on, you know, kicks in, that we're going to see. And I, I think a lot of people will be really excited, especially those who couldn't play 1.x because they didn't have a, a machine that could run it. I think that they're, um, you know, granted, <laughs> not knowing what people's computers are, but I think a lot more people will be able to be exposed to this game that wanted to and never got the opportunity. Mm. Mm -hmm. On the um, network stress topic, there was the one time where everybody made a character all on the same server, and they were testing the server stress, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. I just have to give that as an example for server stress. There was there must have been a thousand or more people sitting in the Adventures Guild, and mm -hmm. you know my screen would display a few hundred of them, I believe. But every time I took a step, I'd see another hundred or two hundred people, and it handled it beautifully. I thought that was really cool. That's what gave me. My nice. first like good impression of the server stability. I liked that that I, that I could see that many people on screen and and there was no lag in my actions or jumping or moving or anything like that. So it's nice. pretty cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, please explain attribute points and their effects. How do they work? Uh, I got to scroll. When switching classes. <laughs> well, the attribute points are tied to the class in and of itself. So. Uh, namely, you know, you would go and you level up, and once you hit level 10, you get in a certain distribution of a points that you can assign to different stats, um, much like they had it in one point, like, you know, two X or whatever. Um, that still uh, ap applies, but it's by class. I mean, so if someone's thinking of, you know, the very uh, when 14 first launch, and you could assign it to, you know, you had one pool of, of points. Back when we had, like, physical classes. Yeah, physical oh, level. My God. Exactly. Yeah, but now it's actually based off your class. So as your class levels up, you get uh, points that you can set to whatever uh, you want. So um, yeah, just uh, you'll you'll I think play around with it, and there'll be ways to you know uh, out reallocate later. A couple like of people have asked uh, what the stats are going to end up equaling to now. If we wanted to go over that, exactly now. what I was going to say. Yeah, <laughs> they uh, they have more defined roles now, I think, and and they work out really well with with the way that they're doing classes now. Um, strength is your auto attack damage. Uh, dex is your 
uh, archer damage. Vitality is your HP. Uh, mind is your healing and your conjurer damage. Intelligence is black mage damage, and piety is MP. And that's it. So they made it much simpler to get the stat you need mm -hmm. for your job. And they've also introduced a lot of other stats that not necessarily are really being used, like uh, oh, yeah. morale uh, were not being used, but for PvP later. Determination, uh, reducing the mm -hmm. uh, ability skill to speed. get interrupted by spells. Um, there's skill also speed. skill speed and spell speed, yes. which actually affects the GDC, and maybe we'll want to talk about uh, the global cooldown um, in and of itself. But uh, you have that ability to de uh, decrease uh, your you know, global cooldown, which I think is... Uh, really uh, <laughs> exciting because I think that might, you know, d don't know for sure yet, but later in levels that might take um, weapon damage and uh, and skill speed into account when you're trying to, uh, you know, decide what it, <laughs> what's the best thing that you want to go with. It seems like uh, all the stats that you can find on gear are are pushing towards like separate builds for the different classes. If you, if you think of other MMOs where either you want like an attack speed build or a crit build or something like that, finding those stats on that gear that we talked about earlier with the random stats and putting it all towards one of the, the directions you want to go with on your gear and your character, um, I think that's viable now, which is uh, thought-provoking. Yeah, um, and it, coming from an 11 background, I'm just worried that skill speed is just going to be the new haste and you need to have capped skill speed or no one's going to want you in anything. <laughs> Well, I feel like that's it's one of those things we're just gonna have to we're gonna have to explore and just kind of you know figure out because you're not you're not macro swapping in gear or anything in a fourteen. Yeah. So thank goodness. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta yes. you know either you'll have um, specific you know builds maybe like Mog's head or um, you know you'll just have to find that kind of happy medium you know between all the different gear that you have. So well, we've only talked about uh, stats in terms of uh, what is it fighting. War and magic. Do we want to yes. do crafts? The Dimity craft. Yeah, I, I crafted. I got a like, <laughs> leather worker to ten and, and carpenter like to six. Um, you know, I, I didn't do it very you know heavily, but I actually I love the crafting changes. It's like it's it's got me excited. The crafting log works really well. Um, it works as expected. Um, there's a couple of things that I think I would prefer to have them change, uh, and I believe that those are probably going to come. I've done my part and left my feedback uh, regarding it, but. Uh, it's easy to get into. Um, now, one change that you know I don't know if everybody's aware of, but uh, crafting leaves uh, require you to actually uh, acquire the items yourself. They've uh, from in one point at X or whatever. Uh, the you did crafting leaves, and they gave you the materials, or you had to go talk to the NPC to get the materials. In uh, in the new build, you get in ARR. You have to go find the materials, gather them, purchase them, or whatever, and then that way. Uh, you can then craft. Uh, you know, people can go either way on it, uh, but I actually I kind of preferred that. It helped, uh, I think, make the crafting it rounded it out, making it feel more like a, a class in of itself. But um, I really enjoy. I think I'm going to craft a lot more in ARR. I only ended up in 1.x getting my uh, carpenter into the the low, the high 30s, um, you know, low 40s in that range. Can't recall right now. Um, but I, I plan on probably crafting a lot more. I, I love the you know being able to have crafting skills. I like that it's tied to the hot bar. I love the log um, and keeping track of that and being able to tell you what you can and make. And much like the hunting log, as you complete items and level up, more recipes will open up, uh, etc. So, did you, um, did you gather it all? Like I did just... actually. I, I, I... so useful, man. <laughs> The, I, no, I was uh, jumping in. Um, at first, I was a little bit confused of what to do uh, because when I went out and started gathering, um, you get you know the the truncate and or maybe that's right truncate. I'm horrible with the the English language, so everybody in chat <laughs> will probably it, start correcting me. I've already mispronounced and... Matera or Matera. You know. Anyway, moving on. Um, <laughs> the, the, the gathering, uh, you, you have to use that ability, and it will then detect uh, much like in 1.x, you where you'd see the symbols. Um, of where you can gather, you'll use that ability, and those will show up on your mini map, and you can run to them, and you can start gathering. And as you gather, um, you've got different uh, items that it'll tell you you have, and then it has blank items uh, that you cannot gather. And they, when you as you level up, those will become question marks that uh, that you can try for. And once you do gather them, it does show what what it is. 
So let's say I started out. I'm gathering um, uh, like shards or something like that. He'll say I've got a 78% chance to gather this shard. So I gather it because it's the most uh, chance. And as I gather, you can start to chain that. Yes. Uh, for, uh, further and further, and then you can start having uh, access before you're, you know, you, you run out of energy or resources for the, the for, for the node. Uh, then you can start chaining that to where you might have a greater chance of gathering something more difficult uh, in that regard. So it actually, I, I think it's a well balanced system. It works real well both with the gamepad and with the keyboard and mouse. Um, and what I ended up doing is that because obviously the the markets aren't huge and there's not a lot of inventory as people are still you know putting things up for sale. So I just was like, well, I need this. I'm gonna go gather that myself. So I'd go out and gather it, and then I'd start crafting. And it was I it was a very enjoyable experience um, for me. So uh, the 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 changes to gathering I think will be universally praised. The, the UI and and the different skills and the and how they set it up work real well and they'll be making further changes as well but I don't think we can talk about those because they're still under the NDA yeah yeah but uh, I mean a lot of stuff I mean keep in mind guys this is beta things change in beta things can change a lot in beta uh, I think the battle system changed like twice between alpha and beta for the original uh, for the original client so it's good to have that disclaimer for yeah nothing the show. nothing is concrete <laughs> Every, any everything could change probably not like super drastically but it could so just keep that in mind. So if you know if you get in, the, you know, by the game of launch, you're like, well, on Aetherite Radio, they said blah blah blah. That's not how it works. Well, yeah, they changed it. So <laughs> we're just talking about how things are right now, That's mm-hmm. right this second for I think April twenty fourth, twenty thirteen. It always should change, always. Mm-hmm. And that's I think that's the exciting part about the MMO is that. It's, uh, you know, not a living world, but it's, you know, that persistent world. Things are changing, the story's evolving, and you get to take place and experience that. I mean, I guess that's kind of why I really enjoyed, you know, 1.x is that we were seeing so much change. The story was, you know, always ongoing, and we knew it was coming to a close. And then with, uh, with ARR, it's like, you know, the game is, you know, a whole new game. Uh, this is not an expansion pack. This is not any of that. This is a brand new ground-up, Here's Final Fantasy XIV. Boom. Almost like they should have given it another number, like 15. It's that different, I think. I mean, it's the same world and so forth, but it's a new game. I, I, I can understand, but I think from a marketing and from a, yeah, a perspective, course. that would always leave a black mark on Final Fantasy XIV. This communicates to everybody, we're not going to ever give up on Final Fantasy, and if, it, you know, and if we mess up, uh, we're going to get it right. And no, according to Twitch44, it's not Final Fantasy XIV-2. This is Final Fantasy XIV, um, and this is, you know, well, Final Fantasy. <laughs> well, well, my, yeah. If it did, I don't think we'd be having this conversation. We'd be having a lot of other ones. Um, but, you know, you can't, you know, hindsight being 2020. Um, I'm excited for launch. I'm excited well, uh, for Phase 3, Phase 4 launch. And then I'm really, uh, I really hope a lot of people are excited and, and really enjoy it as much as I have uh, because I'm really excited about the, the first expansion. I think the first expansion um, is going to be unbelievable because uh, Yoshi P won't be in this constant mode of we're getting this up. He'll actually have you know more time, and they're already you know from a development perspective, it's already being worked on. But um, it's it's just going to be uh, phenomenal. Phenomenal. That's when you can say Final Fantasy fourteen two is the first expansion, two or three or whatever we call it. <laughs> okay. Do we want to go over the Gomer and Ruins thing? Or? I, I I get talking when I drink. It's cool. It's cool. It's important <laughs> for us to talk. There's a it. lot of um, kind of ruiny type stuff all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't. Where was the the Gilmore? Route? I want I. North Stroud. Uh, North Stroud. It's there's a little tiny section. It doesn't look like in the, in hardly the middle, anything kinda, like it did. Right? Yes, exactly. Right next to yeah. Falgord. Yeah, you yeah. can see if you ever got up to the original ruins. There was it was like a pit in the ground with <laughs> oh. some. So I much. wish I did. I tried so many times. You never did? You I needed never to take did. a paladin with you. Spores, That's what I did. Man. But yes, um, there is a portion of the original ruins, something that looks like the original ruins there, but there's been like a landslide. So it's just more evidence of how much mm-hmm. the land has changed due to yeah. uh, Dalamud. Uh, but yeah, there's a whole bunch of different ruins and stuff that have just been uncovered because of the ground being shaken around or whatever. It's just, like it's really city. great to. There's like a whole, like. It's like a million cities just underground that we never knew were there. So that's mm-hmm. that's interesting. And they've they've said before too, um, there's going to be a lot of lore in 2.0 about uh, you know like Gamora, um, 
the uh, Silde, which is the uh, kind of ancient city right over uh, in Thanalon there with, with Old Da. Um, there were a couple other ones that they mentioned that I, I can't even remember. Um, but there's going to be a lot of lore, uh, a lot of kind of ancient civilization stuff, a lot of history. Um, I'm sure we'll find out more about the Allegan Empire, you know, going you know, looking at Crystal Tower storyline and Bahamut and Dalmud and stuff like that. So mm. storyline is going to be really, really cool in 2.0. Look forward to it. Yes, please look forward <laughs> to it. Uh, market words. Just oh. kidding. We don't have those anymore. <laughs> <laughs> There's the market uh, board now. Yes, now it's a market, market board. Words. They're so boring. It worked well, though. I mean, it was simple. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it works well. Obviously, it more more improvements are going to be needed because, um, but for phase one, phase two, it does exactly what it needs to be doing, and I think it's a really good platform to build in. And, and they've already said that they've got uh, improvements in place, ready to go for phase three and phase four. Um, yeah. So you know, I think it's going to be uh, it's going to make it a lot easier. One of the nice thing, well, I guess you know, phase one and phase two, they say it in the. Uh, in the help, but the markets are actually going to be linked. Um, right now, we'll in phase one and two, we only have access to Grenania, but uh, in the help text, it does uh, let us know that the markets will be linked to Ulda and to Limza, so you won't have what you had in 1X where everybody just sold in, uh, in uh, Ulda, yeah. and it's like, okay, well, you put it on the markets, and it's uh, <laughs> anybody can go to the market board, and they can purchase, and I think that's going to break up any one city being kind of uh, you know super yeah. hubby. There's like the one guy in Limza selling like a Quad socketed pole arm with like a bunch of crit materia for one guild. No one would ever know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the uh, I ended up having to put one of my uh, retainers in the in the Gridania just because I, I uh, like was gone for like more than a week. Logged in and they had got kicked out of the older mm -hmm. markets and then I was like crap. I couldn't get them back so, in. So, like after an update, you had to get it right in there. Yeah, otherwise. it's like sorry, <laughs> sorry boss. Uh, update day. Uh, the finish. Uh, the patch is finished. I got to go home for a minute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We kind of answered some of this. Uh, Can we talk what, about the retainer bell, since that's sort of related. Yeah, that's true. Uh, is there one near the actual like outside markets now? I think there is. I'm trying to remember, I I think there was. Yes, it was there one is. in Old Grid by the NPCs there. That's yeah, the one I like used. the uh, the long line of market stalls. There's actually. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. where the boards are too. Yep. Mm -hmm. So sort of organized as it ought to be. But then you also have the, uh, the retainer bell that's in your mock house thing. Right. Yeah. I think they call that an in. Whatever, I... mock house thing. <laughs> I was going to say, did I miss the mock houses in the beta? No, I, I've always called it a mock house. Cause... God, if, if housing was in phase two and I missed it, I'm just going to go kill myself right now. <laughs> no. I'm gonna cry. I'm going to cry. Uh, from, to from 11, mock house. My bad. <laughs> in room. Right. Slap my hand. But, uh, yeah, how's it should be cool when that comes out? Um, what phase of the beta are we in? Is SE on schedule? Um, phase they are, two I believe. Is phase two. <laughs> yeah, phase two is ending uh, this coming weekend. Everybody so, cool. has been saying that they're behind, but actually, according to the beta test document, we're right on schedule. Yeah. You know what? So, nobody should be nobody should be saying anything about behind because the problem we had in the first place is that they released too early. Mm -hmm. Take as much time as you need for Enix. Absolutely. Yeah. I yeah, you know let's, let's do this right. I, there, there is you know obviously the the natural pressure that you know there's some point where all right <laughs> you need a release you know but at the same time right now I think we're in a good you know let's get this right. Um, you don't get an, I don't think they'll get another shot no. uh, to really make a first impression. Okay. Yeah, and you know, even the stuff that they've said that they're going to release shortly after release, I I almost feel like, man, they should stick that right in release. It would mm -hmm. just add to the you know amount of content that mm -hmm. the release. Should I have. have a feeling they're going to throw in a bunch of stuff that they're saying, oh yeah, it'll be after release. Be like, just kidding. Here you go, everybody. It's happy. it's that weird kind of vibe where it's like, yeah, it'll be after release. It's like, will it? Will it really? When will it be after release? How how long are we talking here? You know, it's like, but they got to find that kind of medium where they you know. They want the game to have, you know, to be Content. ready, but they don't want to wait forever either. Mm -hmm. So, but I think, I think, you know, once it's, it's got enough content, and I mean, you know, and you got to consider too that, um, you know, Square Enix is, is looking to bring in a whole bunch of new people, not just the people back from 1.0. Mm -hmm. um, and so for new players, there's going to be a lot of content. 
uh, is because the whole game's going to be new. Um, and then for players that played 1.0, oh, there's going to be you know Crystal Tower. There's going to be um, some new primals to take on and stuff like that, or, and new equipment from uh, from primals to get too. So uh, there's going to be a lot for for a lot of people to do. So. I think it will also be important for them to have a really nice content update, the first big patch that right out of the gate, mm -hmm. um, being able to do, set, step up and say, boom, here's all this great stuff. Um, I think that will also help energize people to see that their their subscription fee is contributing to great content yeah. rather than like, oh, by the way, we've added you know three quests. Well, no, it's like now we've added housing. Oh, here's this other and We've stuff. added like 50 quests. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. And I think what we'll probably see, and this is, of course, you know, speculation, but, you know, uh, Yoshi, you know, has talked about how he wants, you know, the schedule in which he wants to see the updates. And we'll probably see, you know, minor hot fixes and things like that throughout, sure. um, you know, the cycle. But, you know, every, you know, major update will, I think, bring in more story, bring in, you know, more content. Mm -hmm. um, I, it will be, I think, an exciting time for all of us, uh, you know, who are fans of the Final Fantasy, um, you know, franchise. Yeah. All right. Our next question here from Deli. Uh, in 2.0, is the music style from 1.0 to the the kind of like two or three minute long loop going to stay or are we going to hear the 30 second short clips and then have it fade out? Uh, this was actually one of my biggest gripes about 2.0 is that um, the music now, it's you know the way that they're they're working with the sound design it's you know you'll be walking around in the shroud you'll right when you first like zone into it it'll play a clip 20 30 seconds long and then it'll kind of fade out and then you'll come up to you know a camp or something and some music will fade back in for another 20 30 seconds then it'll fade back out and the music is good like i don't i don't I mean i'm not trying to bash Sokin. like his stuff is really really awesome and i think in a lot of cases more so than umasu's original score for 14 which is saying a lot um and I just I want to hear more of it and not just ambient noise. Yeah, it feels so like I'm it. hoping there's an, maybe they can add an option to have that loopy music back if people want it. I don't I don't know. Like I feel like there needs to be more music and not just like fade in and out and just ambient noise the whole time. It doesn't feel like there's a zone theme. I think that's yeah kind of what it is. Like well, and, it changes up so often. There's different iterations of it, and it yeah. comes and goes. And yeah, so it's mm -hmm. it's very. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I kind of really, like the permanent I just, music. I, I just like soaking stuff. I just want more. <laughs> I yeah, think that's I what really I really did like the music. To. One of my biggest issues mm. was for in Dungeons example, especially in Hawk's Manor, it's you go in, you hear this awesome score, yeah, and it lasts for thirty don't. seconds, and then it goes back to the fighting music, and I'm like, I don't want this. I want the thing I heard in the exactly. beginning. Exactly. Yeah, and I mean, and, and some of that could be that it, it's still beta, and they're still mm -hmm. you know working on that, which yeah. I really really hope is the case, because especially like the Hawk Manor stuff, you get in, I just I just like wanted to sit there for a minute because I was like, this is really cool. You know, they got some like organs and stuff going, and it was really nice, especially you know from from everything else. It's the first time, you know, especially when they added it. It's like you've been playing, you know, you've been out in the shroud, you've been doing all this stuff forever, and then you finally get thirty, you can go in here and you're like, hey, here's some new music, check this out. You're in like this like creepy mansion, have fun, you know, and uh, then the music stops, and you're like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, especially, I get what they're especially going in the for. case of there. I get what yeah. they're going for. They're shooting for, um, you know, ambience and and the the sure. dynamic music instead of just yeah. static music. Mm -hmm. But you know, it it needs. I, I want to hear more. Of I, it. I I understand. Yeah, I understand what what they're trying to do. I just right now not not feeling it as much as I really that. liked the way they did it in 1.0 when you would go into the dungeon, you would get music, and then when you started fighting, you got a more amped up version of that music. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish that they had continued that pattern. I actually like the the total rock music in the in the beta. It's like a redone version of of the music from 1.0. Mm -hmm. It's got mm -hmm. like a more kind of like epic thing. So it's like it's the same track, but it's like it's like yo, welcome back. Check this out, you know. <laughs> so I really really like that. Um, let's see, combat. We kind of talked about combat already, right? Um... Yeah, I mean, we, we could talk about what do you, what's your opinion on the combat as it is right now, instead of just the mechanics of it. I mean, do you do you feel like you were having fun from one to thirty-five? Was I don't it hate easy? it. I think was I think difficult? I I wish I had more abilities. Yeah, me too. I yeah, think, and I think that, that might come from having you know a couple of level fifty yeah. classes from one point I'm just like, man, I miss having like a full hot bar and even just going from you know one to ten and then up at thirty-five, you could feel a difference. Cause you, it was it was oh great I have three abilities when you're low level but as you get along it's not nearly as 
spammy sure. or repetitive. I, I just feel like, you know, other games that I've played, I've got, you know, 10 or 15 abilities at level 10. And in 14, I had, what, 5, 4, something like that. It just, that's why I think it felt repetitive to me, is that there just weren't enough <laughs> different abilities to use um, that were, you know, that I could use situa situationally and so forth. But you're right, right. It, it got better at higher levels. But to begin yeah, with, have, it feels more variety and, and more options and stuff. So it gets I've, better. I've enjoyed it, you know, and obviously, you know, I, I don't necessarily share the, the, the worry about having those abilities. I think um, being when you start having more classes and you can cross class those abilities and then you can equip, you know, items and stuff to your hot bar. I find that, um, you know, starting out like one to ten. Uh, it's I find it helpful that I'm not bombarded with abilities, you know, and so then you have abilities that you never end up needing. I find that as I learn the abilities that I'm excited and I use them and I put them, bring them into my rotations. Um, and so I find that, you know, how they've got it spread out, uh, especially when you start cross-classing, it's, uh, I think it's very, uh, it's well-paced. I really have enjoyed it. Um, and then since it's not a action, you know, game like Terra, um, it's, I think, a lot more comfortable to have those uh, extended play sessions. Uh, I find that, you know, being in, you know, it's, it's a, it serves a better pacing, if that makes any sense. Did you guys find it uh, easy, too easy, difficult, too difficult, leveling up to 35? End of the dungeons, what do you think about that? I thought it was good. Like I difficulty. thought it was well paced. Yeah. Um, primarily, um, well, it really just depends on how you want to level. Obviously, if you're in a party, I think the it, the content, the experience is better as well as the um, the enjoyment is much is much better. But when you drop in with uh, fates, hunting log, uh, dungeon runs, uh, leaves, because uh, your quests do you know right now for phase one, phase two, do run out. But uh, all in all, it's I thought it was a very well paced um, uh, game. I, I don't think it's leveling is too fast. I don't think it's too slow. Um, there'll probably be more more adjustments, and especially when you talk about leveling uh, secondary classes, or you know, essentially there'll be some point where there will be a grind. But when you factor in all the different ways that you can get experience, I think it's pretty fairly paced. We haven't seen what it looks like after 35, obviously, um, but I think you know, getting to the mid levels uh, is fairly uh, uh, yeah, fair, <laughs> fairly fair. Woo. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I felt it was simple but it was it was enjoyable i guess is the best way for me to put it i i didn't feel you know overly challenged by anything but then again nothing was so mind-numbingly mind -numbingly simple i was bored to tears so it was you're right it's a good pace <laughs> it was right in the middle i, I think you're right <laughs> sitting there like just crying like i'm having fun <laughs> <laughs> weird all right um this is an interesting one. Does the game feel like you're playing a Final Fantasy or just some random MMO? Well, the world looks like a Final Fantasy world. That's undoubted yeah. in my mind. It's it's beautiful. I think that they did a good job with the zone layouts and the, everything like that. Um, as for gameplay, uh, I'll let you guys go because I just kind of explained it's, mine. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's, you know, um, and like I said in my, in my write-up that's up uh, on the site, if you haven't checked that out, um, I have a write up for beta impressions. Um but it's it's you know it's there's similarities, right? And uh, that kind of co goes back to what we were saying with the UI where the whole point is to make it feel familiar to people. If you've played MMOs before, you'll be able to jump right in and feel right at home. Um there are things that will kind of mix it up a little bit. You know, there's combos. Um limit breaks will be introduced at some point here too. Um, so it's not just, okay, you know, sit there, just tap, you know, one, two, maybe three or four on occasion, you know, I mean, it'll, there'll be things to, to do to kind of make combat less like mundane and stuff. But the, uh, the environment, yeah, totally Final Fantasy. There's Moogles, there's Chocobos, airships, you know, as Yoshida would say, they're, they're very Final Fantasy, so. And there's the vanity pets. Well, not, they're called minions, sorry. Minions. M running around, <laughs> yeah. It's like even, even the menus and just, uh. The overall experience. I, when I'm logging in, I feel like I'm in Final Fantasy. Uh, one of the things that you know, obviously, they've uh, you know hidden uh, quests and storyline, etc. Um, but it does feel like you're playing you know, a Final Fantasy game uh, in an online world. I would say you know it really has that um, that draw. You're 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 brought in at the minute the minute you you start the game with uh, even the placeholder storyline that they've got right there. It's it's truly, I think quite uh, special. And we have somebody in, in chat that keeps talking about the GDC equaling 
the uh, act of time uh, <laughs> um, battle system, and it's like I, I would actually agree with that statement. Yeah. Um, primarily because it's like okay, yeah, the the, the pacing. I I, could, I can't say it enough. This is Final Fantasy, and it's a fantastic uh, beta so far. Yeah, overall, there have not been any ridiculous bugs that have caused me to be like, nope, not playing. It's uh, <laughs> it, considering it's a beta. I've got to say. Overall, I think it's pretty well polished. I've I've, mm-hmm. I've enjoyed yeah. each each sitting so far, um, many many hours of it too. And uh, yeah, what do you guys think of polish and that sort of, that sort of thing? I think it, I think it's it's good. I was actually really surprised with the the level of quality. Um, you know, the the first week of beta. Um, I mean, you know, you jump right in. You're like, this this feels really smooth for you know for a beta of test for a game. So. I can you know remember back to Alpha for 1.0. Oh my God, that was like the clunkiest piece of crap. Ever. What was that? What was that battle system then? Like like you're saying the battle system was changing. You, you could like charge your abilities. Mm-hmm. Like you you if you just if you waited longer, you, it would like supposedly like you get like more like attack power and accuracy and stuff. And then they switched over to stamina, which is almost it almost feels kind of like. Uh, that's what they're going back to now with the way the you know TP works and stuff, where you you just spam your stuff and then you wait. The TP bar. You know, the only lot. difference like though is bar. that you'll still have an auto attack. Yeah. Back when they had the stamina system, you run out of stamina, you stand there while something eats your well, face. There was still auto attack, wasn't there? <laughs> they added auto attack in one patch before they removed 1. the. Eight. Before That's they right. removed 1. the. 1. 8, yeah. The yeah the. Now I can't even think of what it's called. Stamina bar? Yeah, the stamina bar. And it was only one patch <laughs> that we had stamina bar and auto attack. That's right. That's right. Yeah. But uh yeah, we've we've seen uh, a lot of changes to the to the combat with, with Final Fantasy fourteen. But uh I think it's it's alright. It's good now. Like I don't I don't have any huge problems with it, so Alright. Um do you lose XP when you die? Are there any penalties for death in this game? Uh your armor will Take a hit. Your basically your take damage. No Just loss of XP. Cost. If we no, lost XP no in this game, I would not play it. <laughs> no level down. Thank goodness. Yeah. Oh, that no, was like worst. re-raise me because I don't want to lose my level because you morons couldn't do blah blah blah. You know, none of that stuff. So I remember waiting um, for like thirty minutes while a friend logged in <laughs> and to come raise me because oh, I knew God. I would level down if I if I re- return. I was like. I've done that too. Should it's have like, just hey, gone and leveled hey, are, are you minutes. are you home? Are you home? Yeah. <laughs> I've had times where I'll just I'll just lay there for like the whole the full hour in the hopes that maybe somebody will walk by. And they walk by, go do something me. else, like you know. Oh, yeah, I'll just, show. Kind of, I'll just you know keep an eye on the on the screen and I'm like maybe 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 it'll happen. I'm in the middle of the jungle and no one will ever find me, but maybe maybe there's a chance. On the topic of the armor repair, though, um, uh, Joker FFXIV Realm uh, asks, is it, it, do you all think it's fair um, with the costs that are involved in that? Uh, yeah. It wasn't, um, it wasn't cheap, I guess I'll put it that way. It, it uh, definitely hit my pockets after dying a few times, but it wasn't you know, so, so cheap that it just didn't matter. You know, you you right. don't want to die because it will hit your pockets after a few. It it did. Uh, right, and at the same time, you don't want to just. If you're gonna add it, you have to have it have at least a, a low level of impact. You you don't want to just add it and be like, all right, it's one gill to fix everything. Here you mm-hmm. go, because you know another thing too to consider. Um, and this is you know I think in part because of you could relate it to people that have you know a bajillion gill from from version one, right? Um, there needs to be money sinks in the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's why there's no more anima. That's why teleports cost gill. Um, that's why houses are going to cost a whole bunch of money. Um, there needs to be a way to get that gill out of the economy so that the f- markets don't go ridiculous. Um, and that's you know this is just another example of that. I think the I think the the repair costs are better than they were in 1.0 even after the the scaling because some of those repair costs would be like five thousand or something to repair. Everything forty to fifty, I believe, was five thousand from an NPC. Yeah, so I mean, it was it was pretty crazy on point, and I I and I'm not sure if if that scales up the same way in 2.0. I hadn't noticed that. I, I think I think I it will, but it did. We ha- I mean, and right now in phase one and two, uh, user repairs aren't in the system yet, so um, we can't speak to that. But essentially, I think the NPC repairs are not just fair in price, easy to do. 
it is a very simple and easy process and usually there's you know they later in 1.x uh, they added repair NPCs to the different canvas, but they're definitely around. So you're not going to be sitting here having to run all the way back to the city. They, you know, they have that ability where you can easily find somebody to repair your gear from an NPC, and they can do a repair all. And they, you know, it's it. The UI regarding that is so much more convenient. And you don't have to go piece by piece. It gives you a list, and it's a, a color coded bar basically. Yeah. So if you're down to like a teeny bit of red, you're like, oh, yep, repair that. Okay, move on. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So. <laughs> All right. What's, Where are we? What's there's, next on the on, There's on a the ton list. to talk about, and we're like, oh, oh yeah, so yeah. much. Yeah. What are we gonna talk about next? Oh, uh, let's see here. Well, they, they ask about groups. Really, there wasn't a terrible reason to group uh, other than dungeons. Um, you could group I mean, in leaves. Yeah, you could do it like, in leaves. You couldn't really in quests. You could be in a group while you were doing them. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you were killing stuff for the quest, then if you killed something, then your friend would get credit for it and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Actually, another really good thing to, mm -hmm. to bring up, uh, when you're doing quests like that, if you help someone else kill a mob, even though they have claim on it, you still get uh, credit for it as long as you know, did something to it. And it's a certain and percentage. You gotta, you, right now, I think you have to at least inflict 25% or something. As long as you did something decent to it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like that. I think they're going to probably also modify that a bit because they say that it's still causing a little bit of stress um, going, why didn't I get credit? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's so nice and it's uh, it also adds that feeling that you're in an online world because uh, you know everybody can help each other out and it, it's not going to punish somebody for helping somebody out um, either way. So it's very nice. The um, Yeah. <laughs> Alright, um, are there any gameplay mechanics missing that you'd need to see before you would reasonably pay for a subscription for the game? Um, you know, with, with right now, um, if they just added the other zones and the content that comes with those, that'd be enough for me to pay at yeah, this point. I'm, I'm subbed. I mean, that it's, I, I've, I've seen, I'm in. Oh. Yeah. You know, I know a lot I'll, of, a I'll, lot I'll of people. for a while. This, this is going to be my game. The stuff that's of slated don't. for release is, is enough for me. Um, yeah. The number of dungeons, they said there'll be 18, and um, all the content that comes with the new classes and the storyline and the questing and the fates. and Yeah, that's that's enough for me for the beginning. You know, that's the problem, too. And you know, and these are all the people like, it's not free to play, it's going to bomb. You know, Well, keep in mind, you know, they need to be able to make money off of mm -hmm. this game. Um, and... It, one of the one of the best ways that they can do that is to have a revenue stream from an MMO. I mean, Eleven has been doing a lot for them uh, in in regards to that. So um, they want to you know keep that kind of thing going. And it's not just you know keep in mind too that because there's that monthly that monthly sub, um, that money's going right into the development for that game. So that mm -hmm. means you know more people sub and they'll have more content that comes out and. That's that's a good thing. Yeah, I don't want this game to go free to play in any any form. People, not people that you know, fine. not that there aren't good free to. They play just want games. to be able to to play it and not have to pay yeah. for anything, and you know. Yeah, exactly. I, I like the um, I like the the the, the fact of a, the sub is that I think it even it levels the playing field for everybody. You're not it's not pay to win. Um, you know, it's it's really like okay, I pay this. And especially for legacy price, <laughs> but um, you know, it really I think puts everybody on equal footing because it doesn't like you know limit you to have to go into a cash shop and things like that. I think it really, um, also I think it kind of you know, in, in my personal opinion, kind of matures the uh, the player base a little bit because <laughs> you don't want to be a complete jerk and you know get kicked out just to go and download it, you know, another uh, another uh, account. So it does right. help I think keep people. Um, from being complete jerks. The only reason I, I don't see this uh, as a free-to-play type of game is because, in general, the free-to-play model promotes, you know, vanity, pet shop, that kind of thing, and the pay-to-play model promotes new content, new um, core content, essentially, instead of the vanity stuff. And I really don't want to see 14 turn into, you know, a vanity shop and a, uh, um, you know, pay for pets and that kind of thing to support development. I'd like to see a normal monthly subscription and then get new dungeons and raids and, and vanity as well. Exactly. But, you know, that's the type of content I want from this game, not not the cash shop kind of deal. But Correct. Yeah, All so right. just an opinion on that. Um, and I wanted to throw out a reminder real quick to the chat room. 
uh, our viewers in the chat right now um, shouldn't be talking about the beta or anything NDA. You guys are all still under NDA. Uh, you know, I don't want to be the, the NDA police here, but um, yeah, Respect keep that the in NDA. mind. Yeah, <laughs> if there's people that are coming out here and they're just you know throwing stuff around, uh, we might have to remove a couple people, and we really don't want to do that. Apparently, um, Code K is not but, under the NDA. <laughs> the trick I Sorry. figured out here, though, is anything that we say in this podcast or live stream is uh, isn't under the NDA because it becomes public, right? So mm -hmm. we talk yeah, about stuff, yeah. and then it's no longer NDA. So if you have questions yep. and you want it to be open and not NDA anymore, ask us. We'll answer them, and then exactly. ta -da, you can talk about them. <laughs> so, You're welcome. Yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. The rest of the questions are just more like our opinions on stuff. So. Yeah. Um, so let's see. You want to get to the chat? Yeah, let's go to the chat. We got a couple, bunch of questions off the live feed. Let's go to those here. Any class balance rumblings with the beta? Um, Archer, I think, was lacking combos. I mm -hmm. think they're that's something they're going to address. Um, or low-level combos, I should say. Um, are there issues with classes? We don't even wait, have all the classes. Wait, yeah, wait, we only had four, right? Conjurer's so. AoE cure is called Medica. I don't know what the hell that's about. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> Yoshida, not that's not Final Fantasy. We need what do you do? I find, um, along that line, I find that uh, all the global cooldowns for curing is kind of like, oh my god, please, these people, they're dying. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I, true. Do, I do think it's interesting how they handled uh, the... Uh, is, it, is it called Erase? What is the Erase? Is it Erase? Uh, uh, you're thinking Ensuna? Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. The, the, way, the way that it works, it's, it's not an AoE, but if you... You, you'll cast it on a party member because let's say you're you're you know, something like AOE poisons you, you'll assume to somebody, and then if you go to assume assume to another person, then that spell, that second one, has a chance that it'll AOE, which I think is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, it'll be neat to see if they actually have gear modifiers and other Matera modifiers increase, later like, that increase. AOE the, rate by yeah, X exactly. Or something, yeah. And that's I, exciting. That I think that adds that the more customization to your play style, style and your gear uh, selections down the line. Obviously speculation, you know, it's kind of like the speculation flag there, but uh, one can, I think, naturally speculate that seeing that would have effects later down the line, especially as you level up. Mm -hmm. On the topic of Asuna, uh, I played Con to 35, and I was using Asuna in Manor, and the problem that I had was, even though sometimes when it procced into AoE, I wasn't sure who got hit by it. So I just assumed it everybody oh, okay. else anyway, <laughs> just in case. And, <laughs> you know, I, I'd like to see that a little more flushed out. Like maybe you should be able to tell the... from the icons. Well, maybe yeah, on proc. Oh, that's oh yeah, on the on the people, yeah, in the party. I just I did it anyway. I guess it's just. I was like, never mind. I'm dumb. <laughs> no, I mean I I did do it anyway. I was, but, yeah. a combo breaker. I know. I hate I hate the status combos just like or the the status elements for you because there's just like, these little tiny icons all the way at the mm. bottom, and they just I don't, they don't stand out enough for me. Yeah, I actually submitted that as feedback that I couldn't tell what debuffs I had or buffs, and then I realized like three days later that they were on my screen at the very bottom, and I was like, "Oh wow, really? Yeah, that is such I mean, an oversight." They're totally there, but they yeah, they need to to be pointed out a little more somehow. If you um, if you select the player in your party too, and it gives you their whole name and all the buffs on them, it even gives you timers. I kind of think that the timers should be on the party list instead of having to go and select the person, but it's still cool that you have the timers. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> pull this original image up in the stream. That very first image we got from of 2.0. The concept, uh, the concept or, one, yeah. yeah. The buff and the timer on the player stands out so well in oh, that. Yeah. I yeah. really was hoping for that, um, and it's a little different than that, but. I, I really, I would like to see I mean, that. And it, you know, it's always possible, maybe, too, that they're still going to do that, but for, for beta and stuff, this is what they have right now. Maybe. I'd love to see the... I mean, a lot of the interface is similar to this. We should talk about mm -hmm. interface maybe a little bit. But um, yeah. the, this, uh, the, the action bars are similar, the, the gauges, you know, the icons in the bottom right there in your inventory in your bag, but the names and the link shell icons, you know, they don't exist, obviously, but the uh, party member uh, UI part there that looks awesome to me, and it doesn't quite look like that yet. Um, one thing uh, I really liked was the little, like, straight up hate. This is how much you have on the side. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. you have full hate, it says 100. If you have, you know, 61%, it says 
it's really, really easy to keep track of your hate and not helps, get hate that helps way. Helps tanks, uh, you know, because I was playing uh, Gladiator, and uh, it really helps tanks out. Like, okay, all right, what mob do I need, and where am I at? Flash, provoke, fl you know, flash, etc. Um, I think it was that. Yeah, that's absolutely helpful. Obviously, not completely in line with the concept, but I think how they do it is is very uh, very helpful. The one I guess complaint I would have regarding the UI is the names over players' heads, uh, especially when we're talking about looking for party and things like that. Everything is blue, <laughs> and even people in my own party, it's they, it's hard to stand out in a large group. And that's feedback. Yeah, there's that I've an submitted. example. And I was like, you know, even. Uh, like when you put your flag up, you know, for anybody, for any 11 players out there, you know, uh, when you're looking for party, when you put your flag up in 14, it's also this blue icon. It's circled, uh, you know, and it's very similar to the one that would you would think is in a party. Uh, so it's I, I, it doesn't immediately catch my eye when I'm just running through a, a, an area. And so I would um, my hope is that they would make it another color or a different kind of icon that really Don't. stands out. Um, <laughs> You don't actually have to target the mob to get the hate. Um, if you you have to have hate on it, but if you have hate on a mob, it just lines it up along the left side of your screen how much hate you have on each mob. Oh, yeah. so you don't uh, have to target it. There's an aggro box, right? Anything that you have threat on, is that what you're referring to? Yes. Yes. Oh yeah, that that was awesome as a conjurer because yes. I could be healing the tank, and then as soon as I had some threat from a list of mobs, I that box appeared. It, it wasn't there if I didn't have any threat and it appeared mm -hmm. if I did. It was a, it was awesome. I liked it. It's the, it's it the, saved my butt so many times. Out box for Conjurer. It's like, just, just hold on. <laughs> we cannot stream the game now. No. <laughs> no, we but, can uh, we talk can about it. Totally be streaming the hell out of it. <laughs> <laughs> phase three, both me and so, Mulligan, for sure. Yeah. So. Um, our fates for all levels or certain ranges. Um, it's that for ranges. everything. The way that it works cool. is um, well, not yeah. It's not like you can just jump into whatever. But um, each zone has kind of like sections, right? So you'll have you know a section for level ten players, or you'll have a section for level you know thirty players. Um, and so the fades that appear in those sections are relevant to to that area. So um, you know you'll have uh, you know big level thirty like NM fate down here. Um, up here, you'll have uh, you know a level 15. You know, collect these boxes that the goblin stole. Fate. Um, so there's there's a well, each fate has ranges. their own level, right? Yeah. Like right. Yeah. Like this fate there's is one, one, this one out of your three. range. And so yeah. if you're if you're too far out of it or too far under it, then you just don't get anything. Mm -hmm. So, I thought the reward was reduced, not you don't get anything. Seriously, if you're not honest, you need to stop talking about the stuff in the game. But I am yeah, if, if people are talking about it, we'll just... Not you. We'll just, yeah, <laughs> shut up, Mog. God! Um, and this, you know, we, we do take NDA stuff very seriously here, guys, so um, if people are coming in and just blabbing about NDA stuff, we're going to have to just boot you. Sorry. A, so a question was asked if, uh, if switching weapons and classes is handled any differently. Um, just a little bit ago while it was kind of scrolling up pretty quickly and just to answer the question is that um, once you hit level 10 you unlock the armory system meaning uh, you can then change classes uh, to change class it's a matter of changing to the weapon however uh, you have to actually unlock the class first by going uh, to the guild itself and then by doing the level one you know class that they give you they end up giving you the uh, level one weapon uh, so then this is a matter of changing uh, that and they have a uh, gear sets actually so all your gear that you have equipped to a gear set doesn't count against your inventory. So essentially you can right now build out six different gear sets, and I believe that's actually going away for a new system. Um, armory but, board. Yeah, the armory, armory board. board. Mm, um, so but excited. In, uh, in, but anyway, as it currently is, is that you just can change and hit the drop down and then hit equip, and it equips everything immediately, uh, and it's so easy to change your class, uh, uh, and it works out really well. Yeah, it auto so it's basically like a macro. Question. The drop down automatically equips everything that you have on that mm -hmm. gear set. And it's just like the old macros were, but it works better. And I love that it doesn't count against your inventory, so you <laughs> you can have oh, nice. you know your different classes and then it's like, all right, I want to play this and then oh I want to play this now. Yeah, so much so nice. Since there, there, there's it's definitely some it's getting reduced a little bit. <laughs> precisely. Uh let's see, what are some good ones that are standing out here? Uh, 
any issues with network connectivity, I hope they don't try and implement a queuing system. Um, that's how all MMOs work. If there's a lot of traffic and people just can't get on, there's a queue. Um, there it's, hasn't it, been so far, though. No, it has. there hasn't. Well, I think the first day, the first day of beta, yeah. there was a queue. Um, after that, I haven't seen any. And I'm sure launch day, maybe, we'll see s some queues. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, they're it's working on that, like Mog was saying. Like Mog was saying with the, you know, they had the, the part of the test where they had like a thousand people log in uh, and it, it handled it pretty well. So, you know, they're obviously with an MMO, you can only, you know, be prepared for so much. You know, you're going to get a lot of people and, you know, maybe you underestimate that or you overestimate it. Um, I mean, you know, it could, go, it could go either way. But, um, you know, if there's a queue, there's a queue. Um, that's, you know, that's just the way it is. It's not unusual for, for MMOs to have a queue on, on launch day or for launch week either, so. No, even on the uh, server stress test, I didn't get a queue. Yeah. So maybe they're doing some good things and just making it so that it's not necessarily unless it's extremely heavy load, which would be cool. All right. Um, as far as fates appearing, we got another question regarding the frequency of fates. Um, just to answer that is that they it depends on the amount of people uh, th that are in a particular area or zone um, that actually helps trigger the fate uh, resp uh, sooner uh, it also if you fail and you lose the fate it, uh, it, it will trigger itself uh, you know sooner as well but mm -hmm. it varies and it's I think it's uh, very adequately well paced They've part of the been stress adjusting test, that yeah oh yeah part of the stress test is they had them going like every minute <laughs> and that was that, that was yeah. chaotic it was like oh my gosh you know but um uh, as far as it goes, I think they'll have it at a very well time. Yeah, and they're, at a, they're at a good pace. I mean, you know, yeah. at first they were, you know, every here and there, and then they were all over the place. But I think they're they're locking down the uh, kind of happy medium, you know. Mm -hmm. So there's a uh, follow up question: How were the fate rewards? Uh, as it was in the beta, it was just XP and gil, I believe. There and no that's items. gonna that's gonna be the same um, at launch. However. Um, there are special, I think what, what Yoshida referred to them as end fates, so we're talking like Behemoth Odin, Odin. Those will have item rewards attached to them somehow. Um, so also, I, when you uh, join your grand company, you get seals from them. Right. Is yeah, I don't know if that's going to be though? permanent or if that's just a placeholder for beta. So yeah. Okay, well, going in phase forward. one and two, you do. Yeah, <laughs> phase one and two. That's awesome, actually. It's exciting to see that. Yeah. Um, no more chocobo escorts for seals. Just spamming those over and over and over <laughs> and over and over and over. Um, it was a simple question. Is jumping useful? Uh, yes. It is, <laughs> it is everywhere except, I think, in combat, right? It doesn't really play a role in combat yeah. except to maybe get to another level from your monster to kind of range it down. But or, not or, like... or maybe like if you're, you're a Lalafell tank and you can jump up on a rock so that your white mage can actually see you. <laughs> <laughs> get to a visible Terrible. area. Yeah, it is right. useful. It is. It's not. It's not a useless mechanic. It's not that you're just jumping and it's pointless. And, and, and it's not. It's not a required mechanic either. It's not. You have to jump over here. You know. It's. Yes. You know. You can. You can do this if you want. So. And I think that's. Instead that's of walking around the rocks, you can jump them. Yes. Well, that plays again. Went back to our other discussion about dungeons. It's that. Oh, now instead of this being a wall that you can't pass, you can jump up it and 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 keep moving. So it's very uh, very useful. Makes the world feel more alive, you know. <laughs> uh, let's see. There's some interesting places you can get to by jumping too. I <laughs> I, I personally spent time getting. You no, know, I tried places. do I tried doing that last week and I couldn't do that again. Oh really? They fixed yeah. them. Oh, that's we good. uh we uh we sky rimmed some some cliffs and. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> got to places, man. If if people were, were pissed off about the grass, they should have seen the uh, the one dimensional trees that were all oh, the way in the background of the maps. So I don't know if you're supposed to say <laughs> that stuff. It was I, in the beta. Yeah, that's true. I I I actually submitted, I believe, a few of these as feedback, and I should probably go see. Back and so the rest so of we're them. good. We're yeah. good. All right. Um, that's okay. all we'll say about it, though. <laughs> you're not missing much. You're really not. Um, let's see what do we got. Um, for an older gamer who's played seven up to seven um, and watched the movies, but basically kind of left off there, um, will that kind of player 
know that this is a Final Fantasy game. Um, if there weren't any things like, you know, the, you know says Final Fantasy fourteen when you boot it up, um, are there just aspects that feel like Final Fantasy? Um, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. And we talked a little bit about this earlier. You know, there's Moogles, there's Chocobos. Uh, Magitek armor from Final Fantasy VI is going to be in here. Crystal Tower from Final Fantasy III. Um, well, even, even Fates Final are Fantasy a throwback III. to Final Fantasy IX. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. fate. Uh, the you know is a, is isn't a term. You know, that they just made up. It actually ties back to Final Fantasy IX. So sure. you know, there's another reference right there. Yep. There are so many Final Fantasy themed things in fourteen now that it's a throwback to a lot of stuff, and I think that that'll yeah. definitely excite people that have played and previous the, ones. The best part too to note about this, it's yes, it's it's, it's the most obvious fan service ever. But <laughs> uh, and I know a lot of people hate hate it for that, but they. They aren't going to use it if they can't tie it into the lore and have it make sense. They're not just going to be like, here's a crystal tower, and yeah, that's it. It's just a crystal tower, and it's from 3. Enjoy. You know, it's like, all right, so check this out. We have this crystal tower. It's like this tomb for, for like, one of the Allegan kings and stuff, and, you know, like, it makes sense that it's there. Uh, they're not just, you know, shoehorning the stuff in and saying, okay, here you go. You know, you guys like seven. Here's the gold saucer. It's like, hey, so we're going to open this up and there's going to be some mini games you can play when you're not off raiding and stuff. And I think it makes the sense. distinction is that they're going to do them well. It's not just a, a, a straight fan service that the name and title are there without the content. I think that they're going to do a good job with them. Um, it's just seeing from what I've seen in the beta so far, it looks like they won't half-ass them, if I can say that. <laughs> did we did we talk about the little video with the free Magitek thing thing at all? Oh, no. I know it's it's common, so we, we won't was, talk a lot so, on it, but that's a, a really good example of how hard they're trying to make this stuff important <laughs> and awesome. Yeah. Um, let's see. How much of an effect do the bonus party stats give is it substantial did you actually check and see what the value you know for that because i didn't i don't i don't think i did <laughs> either dude it's i i want to say it was just like a few like it wasn't was anything like, like eight huge. or ten was it eight that maybe? much i don't know and I actually so i have bad, a screenshot right? here that's old um that's up on it's official but the values weren't that high when you at low level in the beta um mm-hmm. according maybe to this scale. So oh, they would have to. Yeah. It's. <laughs> I feel I feel better when Mog's like, did did you check that? Because I'm like, mm. <laughs> I feel um, I I mean I did a a fair amount of partying and it was noticeable, but I don't know if I would say substantial. I like how that uh, and for those of you who aren't aware, it's that when you join a party now instead of just getting a straight you know random buff you know straight buff is that but based off the classes that join in. You get a buff uh, that relates to a specific stat. So a conjurer, you get a mind buff. If you've got like a you know an, a lancer, you get a strength buff or you know archer dex buff, things of that nature. So you, I think it encourages uh, more of a, a dynamic you know kind of a, uh, party rather than a, a party of all lancers and you know, tank or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that we're, we're discussing the uh, the different stat like w- what's the impact of the stats and I really can't speak to that quite heavily. Um, because we're sure that's probably going to scale and change, but I, I like that system. I think uh, it definitely adds uh, and, and really create wants you to create a really good, well balanced party. It's uh, <laughs> it's promoting the diverse party instead of class stacking, which was mm-hmm. kind of a thing in 1.0. <laughs> uh, and I'm glad that that the bonus to the party is for everybody. So when you have a conjurer in the party, everybody gets extra mind uh, instead of just that conjurer or whatever. So. Yeah, and the other buff that basically everybody gets is the enjoyment of playing a game with others. <laughs> uh, yeah. Party, you know, play. We we, we kind of covered it. We didn't get into detail, but leaves. When you play with a party and you share the leaves, there's actually extra benefits that come from it. Not just an experience, but you have uh, chances for more chests and even gear that is uh, fairly decent. You know, so when we're talking about dungeon gear, you also can get uh, chests and leave gear. Uh, you know, using that system as well. So. It, there's uh, and then there's other things that will be coming in the you know the future, but um, I mean this is an MMO. It it, it does you. Do, I think it's more enjoyable when you play with people, but that's just my own opinion. So. Well, I mean, yeah, I won't go into that. <laughs> well, you want to have an MMO, balance, right? A, I mean, yeah, you should you should play with other people. I understand people right. that like to solo, but you know, I mean, you play an MMO. I do to to play with other people. Mm-hmm. I think it's good that they also have the balance where you can solo um, because sometimes you don't have 
that time to commit to a game. So it's nice to be able to log in for 30 minutes to an hour and feel like you've actually done some things. But uh, you got to have a balance. And hopefully, you know, um, with the Final Fantasy XIV community, that it will be very uh, encouraging to, to play with others. And um, hopefully they'll make the, in the systems where finding a group uh, is easy. And, um, and we haven't been able to see all the systems yet. But it, it should be hopefully... Uh, I think a, a, a good time for for those who want to solo and those who want to party. It is very solo friendly. You could do mm-hmm. the whole thing so far solo. It's 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 nice mm-hmm. if you wanted to. Mm-hmm. All right, what do we got next? Uh, did they bring back calls? No, there's no calls in the chats yet. I don't know if they're going to add those or not. That was, that was like the quickest answer I think. Yeah. <laughs> there was um, <laughs> there was one nope. thing that came back that uh, like the markings those were useful uh, a bit more useful than they were in 1.0 I thought. The marking. The monster markings the player yeah. the uh, icons for icons. targeting. Oh okay. Yeah, I use those fairly frequently as a party leader in the beta, just being able yeah. to uh, throw them on your bar and then hit the corresponding button yes, and yes, just that's very smack cool. up a few mobs to for main target. That made t- that made targeting really really easy. Mm-hmm. Have you guys uh, used any of the food in the game yet? Oh, are we really gonna talk about food? <laughs> I like you to eat. I had. <laughs> you like to eat? And I it like it to eat. <laughs> and gave me two <laughs> My <dags>. belly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, food. I, I guess for those of you who don't know, food gives an experience buff. It also gives uh, different stat buffs. Uh, I think it's uh, very useful. I like the experience buff modifier just because you know it, it can't hurt to have it. I yeah. Mean, you, can, you know if you. It, you're wasting your time if you're not eating. <laughs> if, you're, if you're like killing some some vultures and you get some eggs or something, like just you know eat an egg. You know, <laughs> like you'll get an XP bonus from it. So whatever. Food was fairly frequent. I like that. In eleven, I felt like I was pulling teeth to get food just for some reason yeah. because it was expensive, difficult to make, that kind of thing. Um, but in fourteen, really food were rewards from quests. Food dropped off of mobs. It and was, you know what's it was funny? Nice. Like. When they first introduced food, didn't they say like that it, there would be like a three percent boost and five percent boost, right? Mm-hmm. Did you ever see any five percent boost foods? I haven't, but we'll probably hopefully <laughs> see high quality food. I kept thinking I was going crazy, the, and I just imagined he said that because I never saw any five percent XP bonus foods. I didn't. Maybe either. it'll be, maybe it'll be an HQ thing. Um. <laughs> Apparently, people like your beard, Doctor Mog. Yes. I, I think uh, I've seen like a thousand comments on yes. the beard. I have a beard too, people. <laughs> I've I've been pushing it out really hard for about a month. So I'm, I'm working on it. Yeah. I do not. Are you the, not trying uh, hard enough. After, after the after the first uh, that's, that's video called I did, beard fail. First Aww. video I did with Mog, people were like, "Fusion X isn't cool because he doesn't have a beard like Doctor Mog." And I went online. And I was starting to look like I, I linked Mog. Like there's a uh, like the Viking hats you can get with like the huge fake beards. I'm like I should just pop up on the, like the next video with one of these. Be like, who's got a beard now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You you actually started growing a beard. I noticed that in yes. the last video. You've got a little chin here. Either 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 I'm doing that or I'm just lazy and I haven't shaved. I haven't decided which one it is yet. But anyway, let's beard talk. <laughs> got a nice Viking red beard. There you go. I think one of those those Viking hats. I think it was like red or gray that you could get. But um, all right, what? Uh, I think we should ask we have... the chat for some more questions that they want yeah. to have the NDA lifted on because we're here as a fan service, and uh, anyone that has any questions, fan please ask them, and we will talk about them, and then you can talk to your heart's content about those things. Well, we're gonna we're gonna say Sephiroth. We're gonna say Sephiroth is in the debaters because we like seven, and we want people to know. <laughs> we're not gonna do that. That's awesome. I did love I love the uh, the mention of, of Sephiroth in version one though with that that leave quest. It's like, well, what was your name? Adventure like Sephiroth X X X X Sephiroth or something. Um, y'all y'all have like similar names. I don't know. There's a question about positioning important in combat. Uh, it still is af- affects your yes. combos damage. Like for instance, a skill may do 140 potency from any side, and then it will do 180 potency from the rear. So. If you, it does still play a role, and uh, I like that. So you're, mm-hmm. you're, you can have better DPS or better, mm, whatever you might be looking for in a party if you're standing in the right spot. So yes, it does still play a role. And we can't tell you anything about Arcanist because we don't know anything about Arcanist. Yep. Nope. Um, <laughs> scroll back up a little bit. 
Um, some of this stuff isn't in phase one and two, uh, like switching brand companies. We could only join the twin adder in Gridania. Uh, so knowing whether we can switch or not isn't out yet. Uh, yeah, they're all questions for one and two guys, uh, phase one and two. Sorry about that. And so if you have questions about Gridania or the three classes from Gridania plus Gladiator, I think we got to play with at level mm -hmm. 10, we can answer those. And uh, of course, general stuff like opinions. Organizing your inventory is easy. What did you stuff guys just think? Slides into the bag you want. <laughs> it, did you notice that it auto sorted into certain bags? Like mm -hmm. yeah. your yeah. like crafted materials that drop will go into bag three, and your mm -hmm. food will drop into four, and your gear will drop into one, and then two. That was nice. I like that. Yes. And uh, yeah. I think once I got my you know skill speed up to you know over two hundred, the, the the actions actually executed themselves before I even thought of them. It was yeah. just that fast. I don't I have no idea. Sorry, well, I'm just being a jerk. Skill speed is the <laughs> global cooldown, not the animation speed, right? So it's mm -hmm. just the time between your actions. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, I don't think I capped it because I was conjurer. Yeah. I was working on it's, you know. It's also thirty five, so it's like what you want, you know. Interesting question from a drunken chimp. Do you think SE handled the beta wrong by having Gridania the only zone from alpha to phase two beta? I'm question so mark. sick of Gridania. <laughs> you know, uh, I'm sick of Gridania, but uh, it's possible and that a Gridania is the most graphic intensive, which would be a good reason to start with it. Mm -hmm. The um, I'm actually glad that they did it that way. I mean, because from a you know balancing and load balancing perspective, you don't want to spread everybody out. So either way, like you know, we, let's say that they were going to pick any particular zone, and to put people in, people would have gotten sick of it anyway because if they've been testing since alpha to now, um, you know, you're going to spend a lot of time in that zone. Thankfully, it's only weekends, so it's not you know so in your face. But and you know, any zone they pick, I'm glad they also you know like you brought up the a good points in nature about. Um, the you know the the graphics intensity of the zone, but also it was also the worst area in 1.0. Mm -hmm. It was you know so it was it, I think it, it's a testament to the level design because I hated going into the Black Shroud. I actually really lo have enjoyed my time in the Black Shroud. Completely two you know two different you know worldviews of you know shift in the entire um, how I view the game because of that. So I think it was actually probably the best move they could do. Um, any anybody, especially hindsight, can argue over it later down the line of what they should do, what they shouldn't do. But all in all, I mean, I think Yoshi P has really proved himself, and uh, Square Enix has really, uh, I think, made it up to the player base. And we will, you know, we'll we'll know more, you know, in the next couple of months after after official release. Yeah. I like but, this question. Um, in dungeons during fights, do you, you do standing there during most of the fights, or are you moving around? Um, it's very. But a good example is the fight in Todorak. Uh, you're fighting a mite, and it does a, a, a poison damage thing that it just sort of plants in a circle on the ground. So there, there is stuff you need to avoid. For example, that. Yeah, and we could talk about how the same boss actually had a, another mechanic with it where you could attack its tail. And mm -hmm, that would, that would either, what was it? Was, did it stun it or increase the damage on it if you t broke the tail? It's kind of like an um, incapacitation. It stopped doing that. It stopped doing that attack. I just talked about. Oh, the poison pool. It stopped. Oh, yeah. that's what it was. Oh, I. Mm -hmm. We we did it the first few times, and then we were high enough level that we didn't have to. Right, so. right. <laughs> nah, but if you, it, there's a lot of there's a lot of good little stuff like that, so that it's not just you know I walk in, I kill a thing, I leave. Uh, what else do we have? And guys, I'm gonna go ahead. I need to. Uh, I need to bow out here, unfortunately. Okay. Okay. So, understandable. Uh, yeah, I got a lot of stuff going on. So, um, just want to say real quick, thanks to everybody that tuned in. Um, check out uh, Gamerscape.com. Make sure to visit us for uh, when launch comes up or NDA. We'll have a bunch of stuff on our wiki. We'll be doing a lot of videos with Dr. Mog and stuff. You can follow us on uh, Twitter at Eighth Rate Radio. Uh, email us host at Eighth Rate Radio. Er, uh, eighth Rate Radio at Gamerscape.com. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so I'll up out here, and these guys will uh, keep going, so make sure to keep feeding them your questions. Fusion needs to go to bed, but we're going to keep talking, so don't worry. <laughs> Welcome to Gamer Escape, uh, Aetherite Radio. After hours. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have when, the, when the host goes away, the co-hosts will play. We're going to say mean things about you now. Oh, yeah.
<laughs> well, he's off uh, off the call, so okay, we'll everybody. A... <laughs> <laughs> we did a lot of uh, scrolling just now, so if anybody wants to repost their questions, that'd make it easier on us to answer them. I've got one. Um, somebody asked if incapacitation was back in, and the answer is I haven't. We haven't seen it yet, so we don't know. But they did have that mechanic where instead of actually standing behind the monster or on the side to encap something, it actually had a targetable section on its body and you would kill that body part because it was mm -hmm. actually a kind of like a monster it had its own hp bar so think of like final fantasy what 13 and some others had that too where you just target body parts and break them off correct yeah mm -hmm. and that was cool i hope i hope we see more of that i'd love to you know take down the knees of a monster or the horns by targeting them instead yeah. of standing in certain spots sort of similar to uh high chimera was i think right you had to, you had to break the tail but you didn't actually have a targetable. You were just like, I get to do this weapon skill next to the tail and hope something happens. What was There's that question? Sorry, go ahead. Uh, what was that conjurer <laughs> skill that they had that was ranged that would drop the buffalo to their knees? What was that? Uh, the great buffalo. In I don't remember at all. It made no sense to me. You could use... Remember how you could I use rarely cross used it. They got rid of it after like 1.2. Yeah. Uh, when they re did their whole re skill redesign. But I know what you're talking about. It was like some kind of frost or freeze or ice-based spell. Um, that you would never think to really use, but then, oh, it became hand down for, for Great Buffalo. <laughs> Freeze something is what uh, Ring Yoko or, or is saying. <laughs> it made no sense to me, so I'm glad InCap is changing. I, I like the new target, the body part system. Pretty mm -hmm. cool. The, yeah, um, talk uh, more about... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, uh, somebody's brought up some NMs and how it kind of works with the fate system and what we think about that. And I have to say, I'm I'm very pro with how they're doing NMs is that I think there's a some some people want just standalone NMs just floating out there, but how uh, the fate system works and they'll have other re revisions, especially with the NMs, is that an NM you know pops like an NM would, but it's a part of the fate system, so anybody can help engage in the in, in the fight and get experience and and, and uh, gold and then uh, uh, Gil, excuse me, and then uh, what an NM is it stands for a notorious monster if you think of it. Uh, we got people answering notorious monster. It's just a name um, monster, bigger. Yeah, it's just a, it's just a special you know monster of a of a particular type of family, and their 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 hit points and their values are much higher. They're much more uh, dangerous uh, to fight alone. So um, I I prefer the the new fate in the with the NM system in and of itself because there's still going to be NMs like you know all over the place like there were before, but they're just going to be the, the rules for engaging are going to be used based off the fate system. So I think it helps uh, make makes it a pl even playing field for all uh, all those involved. And then uh, we had another question about level sync. Have you guys seen level sync yet? No. Nope. <laughs> it's not in phase one or How phase about, two. About uh, so. level fifty bard, essentially level fifty archer of the community music. We didn't have bard. <laughs> no, we just had Archer. But they did get one song, didn't they? Uh, Swift song? Yes, but uh, Archer always had Swift song. So You're that's right. not new for me. Um, there's a question about AR benefiting more from being able to stream now. Well, we can't, so whatever. No. We're, we're, we've been told that we can talk anything about 1 and 2, but we can't show anything from 1 and 2. So if you want I to don't just... necessarily... What? Know that it'll help either way. The I, question was, do you think it'll help? Oh. Phase three, phase four is really where it's going to be at, and then going on. I think, uh, um, you know, then we'll start. You know, obviously when it's getting your, at least we'll see marketing, and I think marketing is going to be a big, a big help in that regards. We didn't actually get one much at all marketing when one point at you know O came out primarily due to the fact that I think everybody was kind of like, all right, let's not waste the money. <laughs> um, but uh, essentially, what we'll see is probably a big marketing push. I think once NDAs lifted and people can, you know, show off Phase Three and and, uh, and PS3 betas out, and <clears throat> I need to drink more beer. Excuse me. Um, <laughs> I'm on my excited. third giant mug of this, so Jesus. you're just <laughs> gonna know. start saying things that aren't real. <laughs> <laughs> and then, wouldn't you believe it? Jesus Himself, you know, is an NM. But <laughs> oh. <laughs> Sorry, I'm I'm Oops. I'm being stupid. Since uh, um, anyway, since I have the opportunity, on. I want to hey. chat about the fate system a little more. Since we can share a little more of that, I think that it's been a little misunderstood. I think people think that it's just you know just simplistic things, but I I'm excited about the possibilities of what it could do. Like for instance, you know it could be um, open world cutscene type things where you know monsters come running by but don't actually attack you and crazy stuff. So. I'd like to see what fate could do, personally. Mm -hmm. 
Agreed. I think it has a great level of potential. Um, I've enjoyed what I've seen, and they can really build upon that. And I think that shows uh, really good game design, especially um, when you can take a system, you can teach it to players at a very young level, you know, and then they can expand upon that and they can introduce it in very interesting ways. Um, I think uh, we'll, I think Fate will be a real big part of uh, 14 going forward. And somebody even asked the question, I know Fate seems to be really prevalent among the questions about, um, you know, gear rewards. And I think uh, for those who weren't listening at the very beginning, uh, is that they kind of said that those kind of rewards are going to be for more of the end game Fates like uh, Behemoth and Odin, et cetera. Um, but typically, what the, right now, what we see the rewards being is uh, experience, gill, and uh, in the beta phase two, they have it with the um, with company seals once you join a a, comp- a grain company. Yeah, that's a good explanation. Uh, let's see if we have another question in the chat. I didn't have one prepared. Do you see one? Well, they'll be gathering fates, hostage fates. Uh, NMs and Fort Assault Defense. I would say uh, yes. Uh, we're going to see all different kinds of fates. Yoshi P has uh, referenced this stuff in the live letters. Um, so this is actually not a part of the beta right now. They have four different types of fates uh, in uh, phase one. You know, phase one and two. You have um, kill uh, a bunch of monsters that pop or, or invade. Uh, you have uh, NM fates where it's kind of like a boss that pops, so you have to go uh, take them out. Um, you have defense fates. Uh, where, like, if uh, I think it's Hearst Mill, I could be getting it completely wrong, where a bunch of Opa Opos uh, pretty much run in and you got to protect the uh, the different uh, items, etc. And then they have item gathering fates where, like, uh, a wagon might break down and you have to, to gather up the items and, you know, things will come and attack you, etc. So they have those basic four fates are currently in phase one and two. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the entire gambit of it. I think that we'll see much more exciting things. And Yoshi P. Has, uh, has talked and hinted at that uh, in his live letters and in his just producer letters, etc. Yeah. Uh, I like that Fates could potentially contain anything any quest mm-hmm. it has in any other game, um, including, you know, cutscenes and just... It blows my mind. Anyway, let's get off Fates. I think I think that's kind of flushed out. Yeah, I think we've <laughs> talked about them quite hand heavily. Yeah. We're being, we're being scolded that we need to talk about things so people can elaborate. Okay. <laughs> mm, let me think. Specifically, chest drops in dungeons and how that's handled, I guess. Well, uh, obviously, like uh, I know from running the, the different dungeons, there's a couple types of chests. You have your general item ones that you know will put in uh, items to everybody's loot list uh, that, that that will go to them. But then you have the more you know gear rare drops. That in those regards that you have to roll on them or you can pass. So they have a need greed system and you'll get a little prompt with a, with a timer for how long you, ha- you can need or greed on an item. And then um, and I think the system actually works real well. You'll have a, you know, and then pretty much when you kind of take out the mini bosses and the, the higher level, uh, you know, uh, fights, they, they usually will pop a chest in that regards. And then obviously you get uh, different chests at the end of the, uh, at the dungeon as well. And so that gear all gets dropped and you can lot on it. I wanted to uh, lift a little more on the need greed system. The classes that you come to a dungeon on are the classes that you can only need items on currently as it stands. So if a conjurer or if like a mage piece drops, only maybe Thom and Khan could roll need on it, but everybody else would have to roll greed so that they go to the, you know, the correct classes. Uh, and if they pass, then the greeds get the next lot. Mm-hmm. So yes. it's fair. It's nice. And it kind of promotes people coming on those other classes because they would get a need roll instead of a greed roll. So when you do the um, dungeon finder thing, you're going to want to queue up on a class you want gear on instead of another class and then take that gear because you're going to get a need roll on those items. So very cool mechanic. I like the need greed over the old system from one point. Mm-hmm. You actually, actually do need a tank. Totally just jumping on a different question, but you did, you did pretty much need a tank for everything. If you were doing it at the appropriate level, mm-hmm. the um, and, that's and again, actually like, why they added it because they couldn't do the dungeons without it. It's very helpful. <laughs> the uh, and what you won't see, you know, with the game is that you know you're not going to see that Final Fantasy XIV is going to get rid of the the you know the, the the Trinity, so to say, the the tank damage dealer healer uh, type of uh, system. And you know, if that's what you're looking for, you know, that then by all means, you know, best of luck. Uh, but I think what they do is that they really have this great 
balance between those classes. So um, I actually really have never really enjoyed playing a tank up until uh, this point. Wow. Yeah, I, I really enjoyed playing Gladiator. You get um uh, when when you get Shield Lob, uh, it is it is great. Basically, you it's kind of a a ranged attack where you throw your shield, um, and it costs like 120 TP right now. So you don't want to keep using it otherwise you'll drain really the TP. Cool. But it looks great. You're like Captain America. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's uh, you're playing. It's Captain America. Uh, so you're running through the dungeon, and it's like that's exactly the first thing I would do. I would target the enemy in the distance. I would, you know, shield lob and, and, and bring him to me. Uh, and then, you know, then I would, you know, flash and, and do whatever I needed to do to keep hate. Uh, and then while the rest of the, you know, the team just kind of took him down. And you have to work as a team in the dungeons. I find that you're not going to be successful if you're kind of just going about doing your own thing. Because uh, in the open world, the mobs are, are fairly easy uh, to take down, you know, for the level uh, in that area. But when you're in the dungeon, uh, you can't just, these aren't really, you know, people kind of try to say trash mob at some point in the dungeon. But... The dungeon, the mobs are definitely a lot harder, uh, and so you want to work together. Because I was, you know, as a gladiator, I was fighting this one mob. I had this one guy fighting another one, and I had to keep, you know, I had and I, I switched to the one he was fighting just because we would take him down a lot faster than me trying to keep hate on both of them. So it's very important that, you know, within a party, there are party mechanics, and there is strategy. It's not just, a, you know, a, a run through the dungeon and you're going to survive. It's... You want to make sure that you're making the right choices, and everybody's kind of has the idea of what they need to be doing. To um, add the gear, there's been a couple of questions about gear, um, specifically, um, what, what, how many types of gear? Um, for the most part, we have pretty much exactly what we had before, model-wise. But something really cool that uh, I found was there were certain pieces of gear in 1.0 where. It was like just the boots or, you know, just the chest plate. They went through and picked out all those things like scale mail. There's a whole set of scale mail now. Like there's boots, pants, and uh, hands now too. Mm -hmm. So they flushed out all of the um, the sets, which I really liked. And there was a question on gear. Are people going to be fighting over certain gear items? Uh, not really. It's, it's fairly clear what classes the item should go to based on the main stats because intelligence and mind are separated now um, and piety the white mages are going to want the mind and black mages are going to want piety uh, and it, you know if something has an equal number of both then it'd be a both class item but uh, yeah it's pretty separate oh, no, we didn't. what's that um th they asked if we talked about rare bounties in the use and well you shouldn't be saying that that's a good point <laughs> There are uh, mobs that we uh, that are sort of even outside of the range of where the leave tells you to go sometimes, and uh, if you kill them, it can bring up how much experience, how much gill you get from the gill from the leave that is there. I really like actually how they um, made the changes to the leaves, so, so uh, we can talk since we can talk about it. For those who don't know, is that a leave is no longer uh, kicked off at the aetherite itself. You get them from uh, leave meets or the leave counter. And then you can go in and uh, <laughs> you sound like a chipmunk. Sorry, I do that. <laughs> um, I voices sometimes. <laughs> you guys so, are uh, but, but essentially, yeah, <laughs> exactly. The um, you end up going in, uh, and when, if they're on your log, you can see them in, in your mini map, and you can kind of see the area you want to go. You can kick them off at any time. You can uh, you can go and fire up your journal, and uh, and execute uh, the the leave, and then the mobs will pop for you. Uh, and then once you finish the leave, you'll get a prompt. If you want to return to the uh, the person who uh, who issued the leave in the first place, so I really enjoyed the the changes to the leave system. Of course, they keep the allowances as if uh, in one point x uh, as before. So I have to say that <laughs> stay above the influence, kids. <laughs> I have not had anything to drink today except water. I will have you know. <laughs> this is Wednesday. This is the day I drink. <laughs> It took me it took me a while when I got my first leave quest uh, to figure out how to actually activate it because I was standing at the NPC chatting with them, talking to all the people in the area, and then I realized it was in my quest log, and that's how you turn it on. <laughs> and it took me five minutes, and I ran over to the spot I was supposed to go and everything. I'm like, where is it? What's going on? There's no NPC here. So, yeah, I mean, exactly. it is it is a good change, but it took me a second. I was I was used to the old system. <laughs> If you're if you're bad like me and just we're clicking through things and not reading, you're like, how do I do this? Yeah, what I just happened? Somebody pointed out I did actually skip all tutorials. I skipped absolutely everything, 
and I skipped all the chat and the, yeah. the text log and everything. And I did it because I actually want to experience it when 2.0 comes out, uh, you know, fully flushed with all the cutscenes and everything. Exactly. Because we don't Me have cutscenes right now. And the tutorials are okay, but, you know, I, I just... I just want to part of part of my player is that I want to actually just learn this stuff on my own and follow my face and figure it out. And the tutorials for me are just just windows I have to close. So <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, you can mark yeah. not to have them pop up for you. No, I, I, I like to close. I realized them. you could. I like looking at the picture. In you them. Like to close them. There was <laughs> <laughs> there was a there was a picture in them, and you, so you live a you live a conflicted life, my I friend. Do. He it's, is a real doctor. It's tough. Okay. The uh, there's a question um, regarding. Let me scroll back up. These people were making fun of me because I drink fire water. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, macro system. Yes, uh, there is a macro system. In fact, you can create macros and bind them to your hot bar or your cross hot bar, uh, which is an excellent uh, addition uh, to the game. Uh, also, on that note, dr uh, equipping items uh, and other things to your hot bars are very easy. It's simple as drag and drop, or if you're using the gamepad UI. Uh, there, it's easy to, to equip those uh, to different locations. There is a little bit that I think needs to probably be worked on, and I've left that in feedback. But all in all, um, I, you know, the macros are, are a great system, and uh, hopefully they'll you know c continue to expand and improve on it. I also noticed you get passive traits as you level up. I'm just throwing stuff out there now that it, that it were cool that mm -hmm. I liked. Um, like, for instance, when I first got Raze on Conjurer, it was uh, only outside of combat. But then as I leveled a few more levels, I actually got a passive trait that allowed me to Raze in combat. And that was cool. Helpful. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, and those passive traits were, were actually decent. So I like that. Uh, and then I had something else that... Uh, well, that's gonna that trait in and of itself is gonna affect how other classes play that equip raise because right. they're not gonna get that trait, so they're gonna be able to raise outside of combat, but only you will actually be able to raise inside of combat. So it changes how that works. Yeah, Let's and oh, back up really quick. I remember the other thing, um, the okay. van the minions, the vanity pets that we get in, mm -hmm. that you can buy from the NPC for a whole bunch of money. The they were. <laughs> you use the item and then they go into a uh, you don't like it's how to how to explain this the item you, when you buy it from an npc you use it and then it goes into a menu a sub menu where your actions and traits are and you drag them to your bar and then you summon them that way and that was that was kind of neat it spellbook that's the word i'm looking for um and it was interesting that like your chocobo worked that way too and a few other things uh that it's now they're not like physical items in your inventory they're their uh, sub-menu icon type things that you drag onto your hot bar, and that was cool. There was a uh, statement asking, so the Paladin can't raise while in combat now. Ouch, we don't know that for sure. Um, obviously, right now in Phase 1 and 2, there are not jobs, so we don't know how that's going to be impacted, but um, I just wanted to make sure that was mentioned. Okay, um, up, way, way, way up here, uh, asked if there were surprise rewards from any quests. Not that we know. I think that we actually found a chest once, like in 1.0, but it was something that was so vague and random that I don't even remember if it was real or if it was a dream. <laughs> <laughs> uh. You're not the only one that gets drunk when you play games, all right? Well, no, I've had I've had actually had uh, dreams about Final Fantasy <laughs> 14 ARR where we were in 1.0 and I, I had a dream where. Um, I was playing the game. Uh, I was playing a Realm Reborn, and there were these quests, and there was this, you know, underground area I had to go into. It's, yeah. Am I obsessed? Slightly. Maybe. <laughs> but, uh, all right. Next random question. I'm trying to scroll back up I, and get all these questions that we skipped. Um, I've got. So I've got to ask you guys a question. Okay. okay. Because okay. we we've got a lot of good here, and I think everybody likes it when people are objective. So, my question to you guys is: What would you like to see improved? Give me a list of like three or four things that you think that already exists that may not get attention that you'd like to see get some attention. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, I would say the first things first is the, the interaction with retainers slash the market board system. I think it's a good system. I think it needs to be improved. I think there's still going to be a level of stress that users run into uh, initially. Um, coming from you know playing other MMOs, I mean, play Guild Wars 2 and um, here and there, but I find that being able to sell something in Guild, War Guild Wars 2 is incredibly easy. Still being able to sell something right now in Phase 1 and 2 um, is, going, is uh, somewhat burdensome. So I would, I would still work to improve the entire market and selling system, making it as accessible to new players as possible. 
um, that I think will help the economy. I think it will help all people out. So uh, the second, mean, sorry? Oh, sorry, I just wanted to get clarification. Do you mean like interface ease of access, or do you mean getting the yes. retainer and figuring it out? Okay. So interface. Uh, the interface. Uh, okay. Right now, to sell something, and this is phase one and two. There's changes they, they've got planned. You have to go to your retainer. You, they have to have something on them, and then you have to access the market system from the retainer. Uh, I think that probably needs to all be bypassed, and they, you know, they've already said it. I think in the live letters and whatnot, but uh, at some point they're going to have it to where you can just sell directly, put something directly on the markets itself. Cool. I think that whole thing will be hugely uh, helpful, but. Um, that's just yeah. my one thing. Like from from uh, phase one and two, uh, obviously the the big obvious one that I'm not not going to include in my list is the the new areas. <laughs> uh, okay, so number two, I have to say um, the first and foremost, uh, the one thing I really want to see uh, improved upon is I want to see a real dynamic uh, story. I really want to be drawn in, and that's with audio. That's with um, voice acting. I think that would be. Uh, that's critical. I've what I've seen so far is great. I'm hoping that you know. I know they're going to improve upon it, but um, one of the common things that we don't want to get in the habit of is saying we know they're going to do this. I mean, I remember saying that during the uh, you know the closed beta of uh, 1.0. Yeah, I know their quest coming. Um, so I, I hope that they really do improve upon uh, the existing cr uh, quest structure and storyline structure. Um, so yeah, thank your <laughs> meat hooks three three three. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, the story is going to be huge. I think the story needs to grab you right at the beginning um, and, and hook you because that's what's going to keep you playing. <laughs> in 1.0, I'm, I'm burping a little bit. It's, uh, it's, the, be it's the best beer in the world. I have a, for those of you who don't know, I have a, a kegerator at home. And, uh, and it's You're got, so uh, drunk. We need to answer questions. I'm drinking Ace Pair Ale. <laughs> back, so anyway, back to the question. Uh, yeah, number three, <laughs> and then I'll, I'll turn it over to, to Zenitra, is that I think all in all, uh, the ability to group with players easily is going to be critical. So uh, right now we got a guy saying Guinness, but uh, right now I would say that the I'm really interested in. They've already talked about it, the Duty Finder, which I think the name is hilarious. <laughs> but uh, uh, the, hopefully <laughs> we'll we'll see a great level of uh, ease for people to be able to group together and, and play the content. We don't have that access in Phase One or Two. Um, <laughs> but uh, Duty I'm, Finder. I'm laughing now. I'm loving the the chat. It's blowing up. <laughs> um, I want to talk about that. And before you do your list, um, Zanidra, the I'm actually gonna forego my list in what? in quest in 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 order to answer more questions okay. because okay. Um, I just want to talk about the the partying thing. It it seemed like uh, it was it needs to be easier. I think you're right. It like people need. To be able to just do one or two clicks, invite somebody to a party, do that fate, and then drop the party. You know, it mm -hmm. just it's it's cumbersome right now in that I didn't feel like inviting other people to my mm -hmm. party when we were doing fates and that kind of stuff. Good so point. yeah, I'd like to see that improved upon. And uh, I'll let you, I'll let you jump back to questions, but I gotta actually, say actually actually I'll say one thing. Okay, go, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, no, do you yours, and then I'll do mine. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, one thing that I want to see that I've been promised since the beginning of 1.0, and I say it time and time and time and time again, is I want a hairstyling thing so that I can change my hair whenever Salon. I want. And that's uh, it. <laughs> okay, so you, you want to... Um, drop the mic and walk away off of that one. Hairstyles, that's all I need. Peace. <laughs> um, I'd like to... I, I'm looking forward to the DirectX 11 client, personally, mm -hmm. because uh, while I like the theme and style of 2.0 currently, I'd like to see it improved upon graphically, personally. Um and I can't really say the individual things that I'd like to see better in this client because I'm not sure if they'll be improved upon in the DirectX 11 client. Um, because things like the edges Hair of styling. water, no, 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 like the the <laughs> the edges to the water and the rocks interaction and the the actual base textures for things like the ground and trees and some of that stuff, it's it's noticeable to me because I I really look at that stuff. Um, but overall, the atmosphere is decent for a game and it looks it looks good. But I'd like to see the next the next step in that um in in the in the in what this game can actually push on the on the pc and that's... and for direct x 11 yes they uh they will have a client it will be after launch right um, yeah it's coming so later. by default direct x 9 and then down the you know down the line and it will be a separate client it won't be an update to the direct x 9 client you will have to download and install the direct x 11 client 
I like that. I like that they're kind of separating the console from the computer so that the computer can advance where the console wouldn't. Thank goodness. Yeah, I'm glad they're scaling that. And um, the other thing, my, my only second one here is uh, animations uh, and some sliding with the the new changes to movement being prioritized over animations. Uh, there's a little bit of backpedaling and running in place and, and that kind of stuff, and I hope that they work on that, and I think that they, they will. Uh, so those things are just personal um, preference things that I'd like to see work done. So mm -hmm. those are my two, and that's it. That's a good two. Uh, Dr. Mog, have you ever played uh, Rift at all? Yeah. Yep. Uh, with the whole Rifts, et cetera, that's what I, we, we were talking about fates. It's like, that's what I would like to see, whether it was optional or something, just that you're, everybody's here. It would help, I think, healers and support classes if people were in a party so you could easily, you know, it just, but it would auto form and then it could even disintegrate naturally, et cetera, just so you can see how everybody's doing on the left hand side. I thought that was a very well um, done mechanic. And, you know, it's just my personal opinion, but I could see that uh, to expand on your idea about how it would be nice to easily form parties as part of the fate. I'd love to see, um, maybe, this is just me throwing stuff out there for ideas for you, Square Enix. Um, what if anybody that was included in a fate actually got auto-grouped, like you're saying there? I think yeah, exactly. I think that would be really, really cool. I like that. It just, just to even have that option, I mean, to go a step further, they could have it in the settings, and you oh, could say if off. you want to have it auto-group you or you don't, because, you know, I don't want to force anybody to, to be uncomfortable, because there is a level of comfort sometimes that people you know, have or a little a level of hesitation when forming a party, but to be able to go and say, hey, I'm joining a fate, just put me into a party because they're going to have, you know, the duty finder system. So ideally they could, you know, essentially take probably some of that code and, and reuse it to say, okay, well, here's the natural formation of a party. Here's one. And that would, I think, uh, help um, work with the role roles better. Yeah, right. and maybe not just for fates too. For exactly. Stuff. Yep. This question has been asked like four times. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Mog in caps. Random oh, no. drunken guy. That's you, Brian. And lady friend. That's me. <laughs> what jobs or classes? Random drunken guy. <laughs> it's you. What jobs or classes do you want to see implemented after Summoner? Musketeer. Uh, just because we have the, the guild based in, uh, in Limsa, I think that would be only be fair. <laughs> uh, but then uh, the, the litany. Red mage. Uh, blue mage. Um, you know, I would like to see uh, ninja, samurai. I think we're getting a lot of people. Thief. I think we all um, have the you know. same, like, six. I'm pretty sure everybody yeah. <laughs> has the same six that they want to see after Summoner. Um, it's just the order at which they want them. Like it, like you just said, that list is exactly what everybody wants, but which one they want first is just the one they enjoy the most. Mm -hmm. well, here, here's, a, here's a real question, then, that will be... I'm gonna, I'm Sky Pirate, to yes. What mm -hmm. random job, like, not like the, out, of the, out of the litany, I'm talking about, like, <laughs> let's bust out Painter. <laughs> oh you know, my gosh. Six or whatever. What random ass job would you guys want to see? Um, <laughs> we're seeing chemists up there, uh, but it has to be like not of the of the, of the litany. You got a sky pirate. I really like bard, so I'm just not even. Drinker. <laughs> Drinker. That's for you. Yeah, that's for me. A geomancer. I would say for me, my answer just to give everybody, Hello. it'd be totally time age. Genie. Hmm. Doodle finder. No duty finder. Duty finder okay. class. <laughs> Bartender. Okay. <laughs> Bartender. Nice. But yeah, I would roll I'd roll time age. What about you, Doug? Question Mark? answer. Um random stuff. Gosh. Uh <laughs> I'd like I'd like the idea of an alchemist class, uh where so it was a combat a doctor. class. Well no <laughs> that makes <laughs> sense. But no, I, I wanna actually like throw potions at stuff and uh you know hit so the chemist. body. Yeah, chemist, that's the word, I'm sorry. I, I did say. Um oh, questions. Alchemist, didn't questions. I? Okay, we, we need questions. questions. What content is available for small parties of two to three players? Love to RP, uh, role play for those who don't know. Uh, hard enough to find role players in a dungeon uh, that they need stuff to do. So is there any content for... Foul Monk server, just saying. What's that? Fate. Foul Monk server. <laughs> what? Oh, you're picking the server already. Um, well, they, in one of the letters from... The, not the letter from the producer. I don't know. They talked about Guild Hest, right? That's going to be a little low low man like four man mm -hmm. party content stuff and then there's the fates there you the dungeons are actually four man <laughs> uh i don't think we said that uh hunting log is a good one somebody said that in chat uh, everything Sleeves, you know what everything is low man content at this point isn't it you don't need a lot of people to do stuff mm -hmm. yeah but Quests there is going to be of, sorry go ahead that's still kind of like you're mostly finishing them separately but things like leaves are good to do as a group mm-hmm I, it's actually, I think, more beneficial to do them as a group. Yeah. 
There's yeah. some like the, there there are ones where you actually have to emote at mobs or not mobs but like NPCs and then they follow you around and that's way easier to do with the group because you have some people killing other things and one person just emoting at the stupid NPC. Yeah, there there needs to be some adjustments to that though. <laughs> well, that quest was bugged. That was a beta problem, not a Oh, like, I, I agree the completely. Problem, I think yeah. that uh, yeah, slash back in. Um, no, I'd say I think that uh, it, that shows the promise. Though I was like, oh, this is interesting, but it's not something that I was like, this is interesting enough to redo multiple times. So uh, with some adjustments, I think it's going to be a, an excellent addition. But also, we're talking about low man. There is planned high man stuff. So you know, obviously, you'll uh, see eight man parties. But and Yoshi P has you know confirmed this in his live letters, et cetera, that they've got. Uh, you know, stuff planned for even larger parties. We can't answer questions about phase three and four. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we should just. I'm just gonna make like a... let, me, let me travel to the future. One more beer and I'll be there. You know, so <laughs> and then I'll then I'll travel. We're, we're gonna we'll we'll send you away when you get too much more drunk because you'll just start answering. Yeah. Oh man, I tell you, when you, you get me drunk and I will tell you anything. <laughs> I know. I noticed already. <laughs> Just oh, here, did they talk about the question. slowness of casters your versus archer and melee classes? Say that not really. So, did they talk about slowness of casters versus melee classes? Oh. I, I think don't he's really. probably referring to fates. So, oh, in in the beta, it seemed fine. I mean, Conjurer had a slight disadvantage that it had to actually cast a spell, so monsters were dead sometimes before you actually got your spell off. Mm. Which, you know, I mean, sure, it's kind of a problem, but I think that. That was because there were a lot of people doing these yeah. low-level things together. I think once there's three cities and people like spread out a little bit in levels, it won't be too much of a problem. I definitely felt like I was on a power trip because I leveled Archer and I just went out and went, I need this, this, and this. Okay, I'm with my mobs. Bye, everybody. Have fun yeah. fighting amongst yourselves. I started uh. with Archer before I unlocked Gladiator, and that it was uh, it was so helpful. When I went to go and level some Conjurer, that's when I found some stress. But mm -hmm. they're gonna they've got plan changes, so we're gonna the, see um, you know that probably make it a little bit easier. There's a question up here. Um, that's it's basic. It's actually basic knowledge. Uh, it's asking about uh, they like ranger, but they archer goes towards bard. They have said in the past they think they'll probably um, have more than one job branch off basic jobs like that. So I wouldn't worry about that. Doctor Mog, can you link us your roadmap that you made? Oh, I just I just anticipated <laughs> I just anticipated in a document um, the actual release date, and so far it's pretty dang accurate and it's just based off of the beta roadmap um throw throw the dates on a calendar and it's accurate but i will link that while you what guys do chat. we see Wait, what uh, do we see being released after what did you say behemoth oh no man <laughs> your guess is as good as ours at this point we don't have any any special clues there king behemoth yeah. is the next clear next step why are girls so dumb well you see did somebody um, really ask that? I did yeah. not see. I'm trying wow. to figure out how this chat works. So let's throw out so, the, the question question again. You guys have any questions? Anything you want the NDA lifted on? Ask us right now in the chat. Let's yes. Go. Do it. And we'll, 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 we'll log a few of them and have something to talk about. Hate is going to hate. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Now, now, let's not actually talk about that. Yeah. We cannot answer things about phase three and four. You know what's going to stink is though we're, we're laughing at it because we're reading the chat right now. But for anybody who's listening to the after recording, it's going to be like, what are they laughing at? <laughs> um, so apparently there was a uh, some jokes about, you know, men and women. And uh, it doesn't really need to be said or repeated. So <laughs> um, just so for anybody out there that, that is confused who are listening to this when it is not, in fact, live. Um, let's see here. So it looks like, yeah, Dr. Mob, uh, Dr. Mog linked that roadmap. I'm just scrolling up to see if there's any questions that we've missed. Remember, we'll try and link that in our uh, feed later. Well, let's, uh, while we wait for people to, to ask Dungeon questions. Here, Dungeon there, here and how it can be one class. Break, uh, we want to deliver so that other people can know about um, that we haven't discussed yet. How is healing different or similar to 11? Uh, it's very different. Yeah. <laughs> it's better? Is it, can I say that? <laughs> well, that's opinion, but yeah, yeah it is. It's um, I, I'm full of those. Yeah, we can say opinions. It's uh, it's uh, like every you know current MMO where you select your target either by clicking on them in the party or scrolling through them with the D-pad, and then you hit the corresponding button on your action bar or your cross out bar, and the spell goes off. It's fairly <laughs> simple. It's not anything crazy. 
Um, you get to see, obviously, from 11, you didn't, it was kind of hard to tell sometimes what uh, uh, negative effects were on a player. So in this, you can see uh, what debuffs and buffs a player has on them. So you're able to better manage that, if that helps. Yeah, yep, I like that. How easy is the gamepad controls to pick up? Did you? I, I think I, we talked about that earlier. We did, yeah. but just to re-answer it, it's about long. 15 to 30 minutes, and you're going to be an expert at it. There's some adjustments that they still to make, but I'm, I'm honestly, I love the gamepad UI. It is fantastic. I, and, uh, it. I think what we'll see is, you know, ideally, is that once they, they make a couple more tweaks, we might see other MMOs pick up the same kind of thing. You know, it's that uh, it works. It really does work. We can't really answer any questions about jobs because we didn't have jobs in one and two. No jobs yet. Um, we can um, answer that question, though. We only had the three classes that start. Well, we had all the classes that started in Gridania. Well, they have the guilds in Gridania. That's the word I'm looking for. Yes. Um, and we we can kind of infer that you're going to start in the city that your guild is in, right? Because that's the classes we got from Gridania in the beta. I wouldn't think that, but we have nope. no way of knowing one way or the other. Yeah. Well, we got the ones that that have their guilds in Gridania. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, that may be on... the case. It was sort of random how you just sort of picked a city in 1.0. So who knows? That's Maybe true. you're right. That's just a uh, question in my mind. Now, <laughs> regarding scaling UI, that is not in phase one or two, um, so we won't be able to you know to really you know comment on that. But uh, as far as UI uh, arrangement, I think it's very easy to use. Yeah. yeah. And there's absolutely. a lock and an unlock, so. Mm -hmm. You can move it around whenever you want or not. Very that's, easy. That's public info. If you look around, you yeah. can see videos of them moving the UI. It's in Everything turns blue in, in boxes, and you just move the boxes around and then lock it. And uh, that's where all your stuff appears from then on. Um, here. It's been said that global cooldown can be shortened as you level. Did you experience this in Phase 2? Um, I mean, that's basically from the skill gear we were talking about. Yes, yeah, uh, skill speed. Yeah, and you just sort of pile that on, and it makes you faster. So yes, we did experience it. Global cooldown doesn't annoy me any. It's like you know, it's yeah. been said. It kind of relates to active, you know, uh, time, you know, battle. The you know, from offline MMO, you know, Final Fantasy, offline MMOs, yeah, whatever, uh, offline Final Fantasies. But I think it actually works real well. I think it's yeah, w one of the reasons it was introduced. Some people might you know have issue or you know at first with it, but it helps to balance, especially when we see probably PvP introduced to help you know pretty much remove it helps from a uh, mmo perspective to help balance latency i'm so used to games having separate cooldowns on skills i think that's why the global cooldown to me is kind of annoying i guess yeah is the right you're word. not used to it i can see that definitely but you know the more i play it you know i kind of are fitting myself into getting used to it and i can see why they did it but i'd still like to see the other method I guess it's just preference. The uh, the other thing though is that there are skills that do have their own t uh, you know cooldowns, namely buffs, etc. Provoke from a gladiator perspective, it's on its own timer. So the global cooldown you know prevents you from executing another ability, but there are still some abilities <laughs> that are on their own timer in and of itself, uh, namely self buffs as well as I know provoke is on its own timer. Mm -hmm. I got uh, two in here. I'm going to try and hit. There's one. Let me scroll up just a smidgen. Uh, how are the entire dungeon? Okay, the question basically is, uh, and the answer is that you can when you go into a dungeon now, uh, you have to stay on the class that you're on when you enter. So it's important that you go to a raid or a dungeon on the class that you want to stay on because if you you can't change uh, inside, uh, and that also plays into that need greed system where you want to go to the cl on the class that you. Um, want the gear on because then you can actually roll neat on it and that promotes class diversity when coupled also with the stat bonus for party diversity so lots of little things playing together there to Im improve upon that um, and then there was a question on your opinion on Archer from 1.23 versus 2.0 why don't you guys take that one did you because you did played you? Archer I didn't I yeah. didn't actually play Archer in, in the beta um, gosh I played Archer, but I didn't spend very much time with it on 1.2. Um, you know, X. I know my my wife. Uh, she played uh, Archer quite heavily, but she didn't want to play Archer in the beta because she spent you know 50 levels on it in 1.x. Um, so I would I would like the changes. You know, obviously, uh, for those of you who don't know, there isn't an ammo cost 
so there's no uh, archer tax, so to say. Um, I, I go both ways on my opinion on that. Like, I, I do like the ability for the archers to have their own type of ammos, um, but that doesn't seem to be um, a necessary need anymore, which is nice because it, it reduces that tax that they have to, to, you know, to pay essentially for any range class. But um, I think Archer's fast. It's fun. The one thing, you know, for those of you who weren't on the show earlier is that uh, there aren't a lot of combos that are built right now for Archers. So uh, ideally we'll probably see some more adjustments to them as well. But I thought it was a very fun and uh, a class to pick up and play. We didn't have materia in um No materia yet, sorry. In one point oh, yes, it did have stuff besides mind and decks and the basic, you know, stats. But we don't know as as far as phase one and two. We got a question directed directly for you. Uh Zenitra, what is your opinion on SE removing belts? Oh my god. <laughs> Who asked that? Uh it looks like Ivanum. Can't okay. read. <laughs> or or pronounce. <laughs> I'm mad that they took belts out. I like to accessorize. <laughs> That's all there is to that. I'm done. Let's see here. Oh, we got a question. Looks like for Doctor Bog or the Gamer Escape Crew. Random drunken guy, Bryn. Thanks everybody. Uh, <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, will you be taking uh, any new guildies? And if you uh, and if so, <laughs> will you post it later in open beta? Uh, That's not about the game or face lines. <laughs> it's not at all. <laughs> I'll answer it really quickly, though. Yeah, Dave of War is looking for hardcore, um, intelligent, skilled players for our free company and lots of community members for our social link shell. Mm -hmm. So I'll leave it at that. And we'll post everything on the devaofwar.net website. Um, well, if you get to plug, then I get Go to plug, it. too. Right? My, uh, my hey, guild's called Art of War. Eugen's not here. This is our time. <laughs> yeah, not the Art of War, but Art of War. We're on Dalmung. We're pretty awesome. Join if you're on Dalmung. That's all. Cool. Any all more right. questions? Let's take a real question. I really now. like questions for real. Uh, there, I had to type that. The <laughs> question about what don't you like about R? We already kind of went over those. Uh, just watch the video afterwards. You can see kind of our opinions on that. Um, I do I do like to be subjective, objective, and I don't know which word I'm using here. Um, and actually what I'm talking about in R, because AR, because, you know, I want it to be the best thing it can be. I don't think anybody really wants to see it fail. Uh, maybe some people do, but so, you know, I, I'm trying to submit subjective feedback in the in the beta forums and everything and uh i hope everybody else is too and being you know somewhat polite about it because they're working their hardest i think they are anyway uh, oh yeah it's kind of apparent you know they're, they're, they are putting blood sweat and tears into this game and so mm. you know a little bit of uh constructive criticism couldn't hurt that's that's all i'll say on that you know i think that they deserve some respect in the hard work that they've put in even if you're not a fan of the genre or the type or what they're doing you know, at least be civil and uh, post what it is you you want to say without, you know, completely ruining people's lives because they put yeah. to that. <laughs> people yeah. seem to have a problem everybody. with doing that. Um, how about uh, interruptions? Too much? Well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't feel that it was necessarily too much, but I didn't take Conjure Beyond 15. If if you solo leave uh, leaves, you'll, I think, really run into it quite heavily. I didn't know why people were complaining at first until I was pretty much soloing Conjurer, and I was like, okay, this, uh, you know, when you have more than one mob engaging you, it becomes quite uh, difficult. Um, I, ideally, you know, my personal opinion is I hope that they kind of modify that, and there are uh, stat modifiers uh, that will help with that. You'll see the stat determination, you know, kind of playing a, a role in, into that piece, but as far as it goes, I would say that, yeah, I think it, there are way too many interrupts, and I dive, I, I dive more on Conjurer than on any other class, but again, Conjure is a mage, you know, so it's not built to, to be, you know, yeah. take a lot of damage. How about TP? Um, I don't I, feel like TP regens too fast. I, I mean, some people feel that it regen, regens fast enough that you can just spam your special abilities all the time, but I don't feel like that's the case. I've definitely run out and had to sit there and be like, okay, can I have some more now? On fights that last longer than 30 seconds, yes. it's yes. good. Yes. Yeah, anything agreed. less than 30 seconds feels really spammy, but anything but longer than that is, is, feels like it's correct. Yeah, to me. Well, um, and that's the and that's the concept. It's like they don't want you to walk out into the world and have to spend you know 
again, you know, 20 minutes on, on one mob. It's that it's about, you know, being able to move through and fight and enjoy it. But then you have dungeons and you have these other contents that are designed specifically for that um, as well. So it's not that every mob you fight is going to be the biggest challenge in the world. Some people might have different uh, opinions on that. But uh, I have to say that I think it is really well balanced. I wanted okay. to give two two words into about the spellcasting thing. I really want to see it push back spellcasting instead of interrupting spellcasting. That's just my mm -hmm. opinion on it. I'd like to see spellcasts be longer if lots of things are hitting you instead of interrupting you all the time. That's I would it. agree. That's all I yeah. wanted to say. It's good. It's good. I, I put that same feedback in. I think I like people who post who say that as well. Mm. <laughs> um, question based on 1.0. Can we expect a healthy RP community? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, I, I don't do it, but there's a lot of people that that love that. So um, there. there's there's a fair amount of uh, RP chatter right now about where the heck we're gonna go. So if you like our peers, then watch for the the server and don't be afraid to hop on. If you don't like our peers, avoid us. <laughs> it works. It works. We'll we'll make public which server we want to go to. Hopefully, even Square Enix will do that. And then if you don't want to have anything to do with us, then just Walk on by the server, pick the next one. Um, what's next? How do you... I think someone was asking about surprise rewards from MeatQuest. We answered that a little bit earlier. There's not really anything so far, but I think there might be some random chests. Uh, there's a question from Wintour. How do you feel about A Realm Reborn being directed towards a more standard audience for MMOs? As it brings in more players, that doesn't always mean a better community, as we can see displayed. Oh, whatever. The question is, how do you feel about it being directed toward a wider, wider standard uh, audience? I don't know that that's really a question, because I think that 1.0 was trying to do that too, right? I mean, mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think any MMO tries to get the largest number of fan base that they yeah. possibly can. That's um, how you make money. Yeah, so I mean, taking <laughs> taking features or standard MMO, you know, features from games these days, quote unquote, uh, you know, it's it's just a it's an expectation kind of thing, and I think if people don't see the things that they expect to see in an MMO, then they're not going to play it. So the features that we're seeing, like hot bars and jumping, I don't know, and other miscellaneous things, they're they're kind of MMO standards these days, and I think that's why they're going in. And I, I think in the regards to the community, I would have to say is that the community is what we, the community, make it to be. Uh, just because more people are brought in doesn't mean it's necessarily going to drag the community down. It's up to, to us as a, as a community to decide, you know, how we want to act and react to things. So, um, you know, the best thing to do in that regard is to be nice to players. I mean, I've always had the best experience playing, you know, coming from Final Fantasy XI, playing fourteen is that I've always found great people to play with. I don't think that's going to change with more people coming into the game. Sure, you're still going to you know, create a, a greater poten uh, potential for jerks, and people are going to act like that, uh, that way, but you still are going to be getting you know, way more, I think, players who want to be there, who want to experience the game, and it's uh, up to us to be inviting, to be encouraging, and even, if necessary, be correcting uh, towards those players. You know? So the community isn't defined by the volume it's defined by us and our standards on um, what we want to see mm. good points thank you i get uh insightful <laughs> <laughs> the more you drink oh yeah i'll break out the, the theology <laughs> <laughs> uh this they just what classes should be started et cetera et cetera that's uh it's pretty heavily based in 1.0 you should be able to find that mm-hmm on the uh, topic of community, just a slight note, um, I wanted to thank everybody that is fairly welcoming to the new people that are looking at Final Fantasy XIV, just personally, uh, because all these new people that are going to be coming to Final Fantasy XIV when A Realm Reborn hits, uh, I don't want to see them alienated. So I right. thank you yeah. I thank you from Dr. Mog for anyone that takes, <laughs> takes just half a second and uh, like points those star. people in the right direction. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Chat, be friendly. I mean, it's uh, the, the nicer we are, the more people are going to stick around and they'll get invested in the game, the more people are subbed. It's that, you know, if we're all jerks to each other, yeah, <laughs> and the game, you know, doesn't do well, people say the community sucks, it's our fault. Mm. But I have to say, though, one of the things that I'm even talking about is that there's lots of chat going on in Phase 1 and 2, um, and it's very exciting when I log in. There's always people, they're talking about all kinds of things, being very helpful for the people. So right now I would say that the community uh, for the different servers that I've kind of played on uh, very helpful, very awesome. So shout out to everybody 
um, who's in the beta and, and really being awesome. Yeah, I got a lot of uh, very helpful people shouting answers to questions. Uh, in fact, for a few days during the beta, when I had finished up Conjurer at 35 and, you know, didn't really want to go level up another class, I sat in town and just answered questions for people like, in the shouts, and a lot of people were doing it, I noticed, and uh, that was really cool to see because, um, you know, with the, the stuff I hear, people complaining and stuff, it wasn't at all like that in the game. People were very helpful. As far as the servers that um, I'm on, I'm playing on Marlboro and I'm playing on Tomberry. Uh, yeah. For those who want to play with Bryn, the random drunken guy. <laughs> <laughs> and if you want to play with Dr. Mog, I was on the Chocobo server or Moogle server. I forget which, but I'll let you know when uh, Phase 3 comes around. Tomberry. I guess, I, do you guys feel like we've done? I think that's... Is there anything else specific you'd like to bring up? Everything oh, else yeah. I'm seeing at this point is sort of uh, stuff that we can't answer and or stuff that is available freely already on the internet. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'd say that, you know, we've pretty much covered uh, all the interesting things out of Phase 1 and 2 that, you know, weren't public knowledge. Yeah, I can't really think of anything that we didn't touch. All right. Well, then... We can, we can outro... <laughs> I think we got one last question before we outro though is that are you guys going to be playing this weekend for the last uh, weekend of phase uh, phase two heck yeah heck yeah <laughs> uh, most likely I'm going to be playing Saturday evening I hope to play before that but uh, man I tell you being it and having a, a full time job can really you know keep you busy mm. how about you as an are you playing this weekend probably I don't know <laughs> I, don't I, wasn't able to, I wasn't able to play last weekend because my brother was uh uh, getting married and I had to go down to Houston so if there's any Texans out there howdy um, <laughs> so that kept me busy and so I'm hoping to be able to get some time in this weekend uh, and just run a couple more dungeons just for fun yeah I, I, would, I think I would like to run Hawks Manor just for the ambience oh yeah enough. absolutely <laughs> alright let's outro let's do it Fusion left so he's the only one who has it memorized visit us be at sure to follow Gamer us on Escape. Twitter and uh, GamerEscape.com <laughs> Um, at Aetherite Radio uh, <laughs> on Twitter. Uh, I can't remember any of the other ones. Yeah. So uh, FF, XIV, you guys are amazing. <laughs> We've had like 250 plus people uh, listening to this yes. live here on Twitch. So for everybody who tuned in uh, and has been in the chat, we really thank each and every one of you for taking part in this amazing live Q&A. Hopefully we'll be able to bring more shows to you here in the future. Um, is there anything I missed? Cause <laughs> I don't know. This was fun. It was great. Yay, everybody. We'll Woo. do it again soon. Phase three, right? Yes. Phase three, it's going to be, you know, I don't know. I'm just going to say something stupid. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. I'm going to shut the stream down. Thanks for watching, everybody. Later. Peace.